Mm. Ibuki Keita is a young teenage boy who attends a high school in Tokyo City, Japan. One day, he wakes up late in the morning and finds his phone ringing, and then proceeds to pick up his phone. After he picks up his phone, he gets on a call with Akani, his childhood friend who is surprised that he is sleeping at that time. While on the call, Akani reveals that she made breakfast for Ibuki, adding that he should eat and get to school on time. Meanwhile, Akani arrives late at the train station and misses her ride to work. Later that morning, Ibuki gets out of his apartment and meets Mayu's mother, a neighbor in his building. Ibuki tries to find out what happened earlier, as someone was rushed to the hospital via an ambulance that morning. Minutes later, Ibuki heads back into his apartment and eats his breakfast made by Akani. After having breakfast, he dresses up and heads to school by riding his bicycle. While on the way to school, Ibuki bumps into his classmate, Risa Yamada, who reminds him that he is late. Elsewhere, an unidentified man enters a store where the surveillance cameras capture his face and run a facial recognition under the control of another strange man sitting behind large screens. Moving on, Yamada and Ibuki arrive late in class and find their teacher writing on the board. Both students are allowed into the class, and when they get to their seats, Yamada notices that a classmate, Kasai, is absent. Elsewhere, a strange girl walks on the road with her dog and it looks as if she is stranded. Back at school, Ibuki declines to go out with his classmates under the guise that he is busy. After that, he heads out of school and branches at a restaurant to have lunch. At sunset, Ibuki rides his bicycle to a point in the city where he crosses a barrier to have a good view of the city. Later that evening, he buys dinner from a spot and proceeds on his journey to his apartment. On the way, he observes a lady standing at the train station and looks shocked when he sees her. Elsewhere, Shizuka, Yamada's friend from school, asks Yamada if she has a sister. She asks this because she sees another person who looks like Yamada, and when Yamada sees the person, she makes a joke about the existence of doppelgangers. Back at Ibuki's location, he is seen on his bike chasing after the train that the lady from earlier gets on. Seconds later, he loses the train as it gains speed beyond Ibuki's reach. It turns out that the lady he is chasing looks like his mother who died some years ago. The following day, Ibuki wakes up Akani calling him again, and after he gets off the phone, he prepares and heads to school on his bike. On getting to class, Ibuki finds out that Yamada saw someone who looked like her the previous day. Because of that, he tells Yamada not to get into accidents, and Yamada gets the wrong impression as she assumes that Ibuki is worried about him. Later that day, Ibuki goes to the train station and waits to see if he will find his mother's doppelganger. After waiting for a while, he heads to his regular spot to buy dinner. While Ibuki observes his meal, Kuro, the strange girl from earlier, arrives at the spot to buy food and eat. When she takes out money to pay for the food, the food vendor reveals that it is not enough, and she looks sad as a result. Kuro looks famished after long hours of walking, and Ibuki takes pity on her and gives her his food. As Kuro observes her meal, she displays a large appetite as he eats her food quickly with her dog. Minutes later, Ibuki asks a question about doppelgangers, and Kuro corrects him saying that there is no such thing. Instead, she explains that doppelgangers exist, adding that it is a system used to maintain the balance of Terra. Also, she adds that three versions of a person exist on the planet, with different luck readings, and that if they encounter one another, they will die either by sickness, accidents, or other causes. The remaining route will absorb the luck of the other two doppelgangers who died. Seconds later, a strange man with a baseball bat arrives at the scene, hits Kuro's head with the hockey, and then attacks the vendor when he tries to defend Kuro. Just as the man attempts to land a fatal attack on Kuro, Ibuki interrupts him and tells the vendor to call the police. Ibuki gets knocked to the ground as he is not as skilled as the enemy. Kuro lies a few meters away from Ibuki, and she gets up pissed about the fact that the strange man interrupted her meal. Also, the strange man addresses Kuro as a Mototsumitama, and he proceeds to attack her with his baseball bat. Although Kuro is much smaller than her opponent, she easily dodges most of his attacks and lands a nasty attack on her opponent, leaving Ibuki shocked as he spectates their battle from a distance. Unfortunately, Things quickly get nasty for Kuro as she gets beaten and choked by her opponent. With Kuro's life at stake, she manages to get up on her feet and land a series of brutal attacks on her opponent that ends their battle instantly. After the battle, Kuro apologizes to Ibuki for what happened, and out of curiosity, Ibuki asks her who she is. At this point, Kuro introduces herself to Ibuki, adding that she is a Mototsumitama. Minutes later, Kuro leaves that scene as she reveals that she wants to kill her brother. Later that evening, Kuro finds out that Yamada is dead from the news alongside other two victims of an accident. The following day, Ibuki runs out of school and screams angrily at a spot because of Yamada's passing. Later that day, Mayu gets killed as a car runs over her when she tries to cross the road. 
Ibuki, who is present at the time, looks shocked, while Kuro states that Mayu was not a root. The concept of root is new to Ibuki, and he questions Kuro about its meaning. Soon Mayu's mother arrives at the scene only to find her daughter lying dead on the road. Later that evening, the strange man who attacked Ibuki is tortured by Seiji, a man from a clan called Shishigani. Seiji and the other men present are the scene are called tribal ends as they have powers similar to Motostumitamas. Also, Seiji is pissed about the fact that the man was defeated by Kuro. Soon, Seiji uses his powers to kill the man, and then he tells some of his men to find Kuro and bring her to him so he can take her Terra. The following day, Ibuki pays his final respects at Mayu's funeral. After some time, he recalls the time before Mayu's passing when she told him that she saw a girl who looked just like her. Back in real time, Mayu's mom weeps bitterly, and Ibuki connects the dots between recent deaths. He figures out that Yamada and Mayu died because they saw someone who looked like them in the past. Also, his mother met the same fate when she saw someone who looked like her while she was still alive years in the past. Later that day, Akane is on a train to work, and she worries about Ibuki's cold behavior. While in class, Ibuki thinks deeply about what Kuro told him earlier, and because of that, he pays little attention to his teacher. After that class period is over, his teacher meets up with him and asks if he is depressed over Yamada's passing. Ibuki replies saying no, and he goes on to talk about his recent findings after his teacher persuades him to speak. Later that day, Ibuki sits all by himself pissed about the fact that his teacher did not believe what he told him earlier. When he gets to his apartment, he sees the lights on and wonders if Akane went out without turning the lights off. Seconds later, Ibuki finds Kuro eating cabbage in his kitchen. When he sees her, he expresses shock and asks her what she is doing there. It turns out that Kuro was able to find Ibuki's house because her dog remembered Ibuki's scent. After some time, Ibuki finds out that it was Akane who let Ibuki into his house and he asks why. Here Akane replies stating that Kuro collapsed, adding that she seemed like someone Ibuki knows. After Akane proceeds to make dinner, Ibuki tells Kuro to leave his house, adding that he does not want to get involved with her. When Ibuki says this, Akane looks shocked while Kuro apologizes to Ibuki and leaves the house immediately. Minutes after Kuro leaves, Ibuki tells Akane to go home, adding that he ate outside before getting home. Akane leaves the house following Ibuki's wishes, and she thinks about him on her way home. Next, Ibuki sits alone in his house and moves out with the food that Akane bought earlier. Ibuki searches for Kuro in the city, and after some time, he finds her at a park. Meanwhile, Seiji moves on the road with his men searching for Kuro. He hopes to find her before Hiyu, his superior, does so he can take her Terra. Back at Kuro's spot, he eats the food that Ibuki gives her and she appreciates Ibuki for the food. Along the line, Ibuki asks who she is and she replies saying that she has explained herself before. Soon, a conversation begins between Kuro and Ibuki where Kuro explains that Mototsumi Tamas exist to control the balance of existence. Furthermore, Kuro explains that all things in the world receive an equal amount of Terra, adding that a human soul is divided into three due to fate. Each division carries a different amount of Terra, but when doppelganers meet, the weaker two will be eliminated by the power of the system, and the surviving division will absorb all the luck and become a master root. After Kuro is done lecturing Ibuki, she reveals that she wants to go kill her brother, and then she appreciates Ibuki for his kindness towards her. Just when Kuro is about to leave, they both get surrounded by Seiji's men, and Seiji asks Kuro to let her consume her Terra. Moving on, Ibuki easily defeats Seiji's men, and they all fall to the ground after taking several hits from Kuro. Along the line, Seiji takes matters into his own hands as he uses his powers to attack Ibuki. Ibuki is set at a disadvantage because Seiji uses a special technique called Exceed, to land invisible attacks on Kuro. At this point, Kuro wonders how a tribal end like Seiji can use Exceed, and Seiji reveals that he consumed Terra from a Mototsumitama he defeated in the past. Kuro falls to the ground after taking invisible attacks from Seiji, and she bleeds on the floor. Ibuki, who witnesses everything that goes down, looks terrified and tries to call the police, but Seiji uses his powers to kill Ibuki after seeing him with his phone. Ibuki's death causes Kuro to go full berserk on Seiji, and she escapes the premises with Ibuki's corpse after landing a nasty attack on Seiji. Moments later, Kuro arrives at a spot with Ibuki's corpse and she lays the body on the ground. She performs a ritual where she exchanges her heart with Ibuki's, and as a result, Ibuki resurrects with a strange marking on his hand. The same marking appears on Kuro's hand and Ibuki looks confused because he was dead a while ago. Seiji manages to find Kuro, and it turns out that Kuro formed a contract with Ibuki to save his life. Seiji uses his powers to attack Kuro and Ibuki, but Kuro manages to evade the attack with Ibuki. The battle between Seiji and Kuro gets to a point where Seiji restrains Kuro in midair, using his powers, and then slams her to the ground. Even though Kuro lies weak on the ground, she uses a life wire to electrocute Seiji, 
while Ibuki gives Kuro a huge energy boost using the markings on his hands. Because of the boost, Kuro lands a nasty punch at Seiji that sends him to a grid where he gets electrocuted till his death. After Seiji is confirmed dead, Ibuki falls to the ground and loses consciousness. The following day, Ibuki regains consciousness on his bed after having a bad dream about his death that happened the previous day. After he gets out of his room, he finds Kuro and her dog eating a raw snack. Minutes later, Akane arrives at the house and gets the wrong impression when she sees Kuro raising her shirt for Ibuki. Elsewhere, two unidentified people ride on a chopper, and the girl there detects an unusual amount of Terra. Because of that, she intends to investigate the situation and follow the Terra to its source. Back at Ibuki's apartment, Kuro and the others sit at the dining table while Kuro enjoys her breakfast. While she eats, she goes on to explain the concept behind forming contracts, and she reveals that she formed a contract with Ibuki to save his life. Akane, who has no idea about what Kuro is saying, looks fascinated as Kuro tries to prove her statement by showing a scar on her chest that signifies where she took her heart. The same scar is present on Ibuki's chest, and Akane freaks out a little when she sees this. Ibuki, who looks uninterested at the time, gets upset at Kuro saying that everything that happened is her fault. He then heads to his bedroom and sits on his bed, and then Akane tells him to go see the doctor soon. Elsewhere, humans get drained of Terra, and one of the test subjects screams in the end. The person controlling the machine kills a subject because he increases the intensity of the machine. He then orders a man to find Kuro, and he looks forward to seeing her soon. Later that morning, Ibuki receives a call from his teacher because his teacher is worried about him. Soon the call comes to an end, and Kuro comes out of the shower excited about the fact that she got to shower properly with water. Minutes later, Ibuki heads back to his room to sleep, while Ibukiya and Akane engage in a conversation about Ibuki's contract. Kuro wants to sleep alongside Ibuki so she can increase their bond to prevent her abilities from dropping. The idea of sleeping together does not sit right with Akane and because of that, she reveals that she will spend the night in Ibuki's house. Later that day, Ibuki, Kuro, and Akane embark on a journey on a train, and Kuro looks excited. It turns out that it is her first time on a train, and she caches a good view of the city as it moves. After their time on the train, they all proceed to a clothing store where Akane intends to get new outfits from Kuro. After trying out a few outfits, Kuro finds out that the clothes look good on her, and Akane pays for them. Back on the train, Kuro expresses gratitude to Akane for getting the clothes for her. For some reason, the lady from the chopper sits in a car and detects a powerful Terra coming from a suspected Mototsumitama. Minutes after Ibuki gets home, he prepares for school and tells Kuro not to step out of the apartment until he returns. While Ibuki is at school, two men break into his house to abduct Kuro for their boss, Hiyu. Because Kuro recently formed a contract with Ibuki, she loses her strength to fight, and the men easily overpower her. As Kuro takes several hits from the men, Ibuki feels some pain in class and wonders where it is from. However, Kuro manages to leave the house with her dog, and she makes a run for the streets. Furthermore, Ibuki thinks about Kuro in school, and wonders if she is in trouble. Seconds later, Ibuki's teacher meets up with him and intends to discuss with him. Here the teacher speaks of the doppelganers, and he adds that he wants to save Ibuki. Elsewhere, Kuro's dog picks off Ibuki's scent from his towel, and he leads Kuro to Ibuki's direction. Back at school, Ibuki converses with his teacher in an empty class, and it turns out that the teacher has some concerning beliefs about the system. After some minutes, Kuro arrives at the class, and Kuro reveals that the teacher is part of the tribal end. At first, Ibuki does not believe Kuro's words, but the teacher proceeds to fight with Kuro. Because Kuro does not have access to her powers, the teacher easily beats her up and lands several punches on Kuro's face. Ibuki at this point looks confused, and he wonders what is going on. Eventually, Ibuki picks up a fire extinguisher, aims its contents at the teacher, and then runs away from the scene with Kuro using the fog as cover. As Kuro and Ibuki make a run down the stairs, the teacher catches up to them and Kuro begs Ibuki to synchro with her so she can fight. Synchro is a ritual, where both individuals bound by a contract combine strength to attain a higher level of power. The teacher fights with Kuro to prevent her from performing a synchro with Ibuki, but he fails as Ibuki manages to perform a synchro. At this point, Kuro gets her powers back and beats the shit out of the teacher, disfiguring his face in the process. After Kuro defeats the teacher, she runs away from the school with her dog and Ibuki. Later that day, Akane gets off the phone and goes back to her workplace. Just outside the building, the man and the lady from the Hooper arrive to investigate the presence of Terra the lady sensed the previous day. Steiner, the man from the chopper, enters into the building under the guise that he needs something from Akane. When he holds Akane's hand, he maintains contact for a while, and Excel, the lady from the chopper, finds out that the Terra Akane possesses more than they expected. Things quickly get weird between Steiner and Akane, as Steiner still maintains contact with Akane, making her feel uncomfortable. 
Excel then proceeds to save Akane from Steiner as she pretends to be Steiner's daughter and takes Steiner away from the scene. After Excel and Steiner get out of the building, they sit in a car and keep an eye on Akane. Soon, Akane leaves her job and enters a taxi while Steiner orders the driver to follow her. Elsewhere, Ibuki and Kuro sit at a restaurant, and Kuro gets a hard time selecting what she wants from the menu. Minutes later, Akane arrives at the restaurant, and they all order food to eat. While having lunch, Ibuki explains what happened to him, and Akane tells him to file a report to the police. Unfortunately, Kuro tells Ibuki not to trust the police because of the unpleasant experience she had with them in the past. After Kuro is done with her story, she asks Akane if she can order a special parfait, and Akane agrees. Ibuki sits across the table and looks tired from Kuro's display of madness. Along the line, Kuro reveals that she knows who they are dealing with, which is her brother. Also, Kuro confirms that it is her brother's subordinates who are the ones after Ibuki. When Kuro asks Ibuki to join her in the fight against her brother, Ibuki gets upset and calls Kuro selfish, pissed about the fact that Kuro came into his life and messed him up, setting his life in danger. Ibuki's rage attracts the attention of other people sitting in the restaurant, and Ibuki calms down after he notices this. Meanwhile, Steiner and Excel spy on Ibuki and the others from a car, and Steiner discovers that Kuro is the source of the terror they have been tracing. Elsewhere, Ibuki's teacher wakes up in a lab where he lies on a surface. Hayu, who is present at the time, is disappointed in the teacher because he lost to Kuro earlier that day. To keep his life, the teacher reveals that Kuro is the one with Ibuki. After Hiyu gets this information, he is now sure of Kuro's whereabouts, but still, he holds a surgical blade to the teacher's neck. He intends to carry out some nasty experiment on the teacher to see if a contract can be formed by using another organ other than the heart. At sunset, Kuraki, the man behind the big screens, meets up with his superior Yuki at her office. During the meeting with Yuki, Kuraki delivers some files to Yuki for her to sign. It turns out that Kuraki is tasked with looking for Yuki's doppelganger, but he has no luck in finding them. On the other hand, Yuki desires results. And because of that, Kuraki heads back to his office to resume his search for Yuki's doppelganers. Kuraki finds Yuki's doppelganger in security footage, and it turns out that it is Akane. For some reason, Kuraki takes Akane out of the video but takes note of Ibuki who stood next to Akane in the video. Later that evening, Steiner and Excel watch Ibuki and the others in a car. When Akane comes out of the building, Ibuki grabs her by her hand and runs away with Kuro. He does this because he notices he is being watched in the building alongside Kuro and Akane. After they manage to cover a safe distance, they get surrounded by some men on motorbikes. One of the men hops on a call with Hiyu and reveals that he has seen Kuro. After Hiyu gets this info, he tells the man to bring Kuro back alive, adding that he can kill the others. After getting the order from Hiyu, the man attacks Kuro and the others with his men using his motorbike to his advantage. Since Kuro has not fully received her strength, she gets suspended in the air by some weird technique, and the men use their bikes to land painful attacks on Kuro. Soon, one of Hiyu's men proceeds to attack Akane with his bike, but Steiner arrives just in time and saves Akane's life. Steiner's presence is quite intimidating and he lands a nasty attack on Hiyu's men, thus making them retreat in the process. At this point, Ibuki and the others are left facing Steiner and Excel. Also, Ibuki finds out that Steiner and Excel are not human, as they are bound by a contract just like the one he has with Kuro. Because Steiner and Excel were the ones spying on Ibuki and the clothes initially, Ibuki lands a punch on Steiner when he tries to question him. Ibuki's action warrants a duel between both teams and Kuro looks pretty hyped to fight. Later that evening, Kuro begins her battle against Steiner and tries to launch an attack on her opponent. The initial attack that Kuro attempts on Steiner fails, as Steiner manages to block the attack. Meanwhile, Excel sits in a corner and plays a video game on her device, even as Steiner fights on her behalf. The battle between Kuro and Steiner gets to a point where Kuro launches a series of punches at Steiner, and she lands a nasty uppercut on Steiner that is meant to end the fight. At first, Steiner looks as if he is off balance, but he maintains balance on his feet and stands erect unfazed by Kuro's deadly punch. At this point, Excel is pretty confident that Steiner cannot lose as she refuses to perform a synchro with Steiner. Things quickly get intense for Kuro, as Steiner intensifies his attacks against Kuro and sets her to the ground in the process. While Kuro takes several punches from Steiner, Ibuki watches from a distance and performs a synchro with Kuro that intensifies her abilities. After Ibuki and Kuro perform a synchro, Excel observes that their Terra exceeds the amount she thought they would have. 
After some minutes of fighting, Kuro gets pissed, and she prepares an attack for Steiner that causes the markings on her hand to glow. As Steiner gets closer to her, she lands a fatal punch on Steiner that ends the battle momentarily as Steiner falls to the ground. The technique that Kuro uses to knock Steiner out is called Exceed, similar to the one Seiji used in the past. Soon, Steiner gets back on his feet after recovering from Kuro's punch and he still looks interested in fighting. To end things quickly with Steiner, Kuro tries to use her Exceed against Steiner one more time but she fails as a magical barrier resists the punch. It turns out that Excel set up the barrier, and Kuor wonders how she can put up such a shield. Furthermore, Excel deactivates the barrier, and then tells Steiner to unleash his full power against Kuro. After that, she performs a synchro with Steiner, but Ibuki falls to the ground after exhausting all his Terra due to Kuro's intensive fight against Steiner. Soon Steiner unleashes his Exceed, which allows him to create speed duplicates of himself. Following that, he launches nasty speed punches at Kuro who is weak at the time. Ibuki, who witnesses this, tries to save Kuro but he gets obstructed by one of Steiner's speed clones. Their battle comes to an end as Steiner lands the finishing blow on Kuro that sets her to the ground. After the battle, Steiner powers down following Excel's wishes. Excel offers to take Akani and the others to their house in exchange for some information. Later that night, Excel and the others all gather in Ibuki's house and Excel begins to talk about her clan. The Noble One is an alliance of the Mototsumitama clans in Europe, and they maintain a balance of coexistence. At this point, Ibuki gets curious and asks why Excel and Steiner are in Japan. And Excel answers stating that the balance of coexistence in Japan is abnormal, adding that it is close to collapsing. She also states that they were dispatched by their superiors to find the source of the balance of coexistence's disturbance, and at this point, Steiner states that they found Akani. Akani is shocked that she is involved in the situation, but Steiner explains that Akani's Terra levels are high because Kuro is near her. Moving on, Steiner explains that the disturbance started about eight years ago in Okinawa, a city in Japan. After that, Steiner drops a picture that leaves Ibuki shocked as he sees his mother in the picture. At first, Ibuki is not sure that it is her mother, but things get clearer when he finds out that she was alive at the time that the picture was taken. However, Ibuki thinks that his mother's death is linked to the Mototsumitama in the picture. After some time, Excel and Stein leave Ibuki's house while Kuro takes a good look at the picture. Just before Excel and Steiner leave the house, Akani appreciates them for helping her out. And then Excel gives Akani her phone number so she can reach out to her anytime. While on the road, Steiner states that Kuro is hiding something, and after some time, Excel gets on a call with her superiors, where she reveals that the factory they have been looking for has been discovered. Later that night, Kuro meets up with Ibuki in the house and apologizes for what happened to his mother. She then states that the other person in the photo is her brother, and she wants to defeat him. For this reason, Kuro states that she must go to Okinawa so she can defeat her brother and find out the truth about Ibuki's mother. In the end, Kuro apologizes to Ibuki once more for dragging him into their current situation. The following day, Huju Mikami takes care of an old man in a house. Later that night, she kills a bunch of people and receives medication for the old man as compensation. Hiyu, who is her employer, tells her to hurry up and complete the next task so she can get more of the medication. After the meeting with Hiyu, Mikami heads home and performs some research on her new target, which is Kuro, and she smiles at her computer in the end. The following morning, Ibuki heads out of his house to get money for his trip to Okinawa. Before he leaves, he tells Kuro to keep their plans of traveling from Akani because it might make her worry too much. After leaving the building, Mikami is in a car parked behind Ibuki, and she drives in front of Ibuki and comes out of the car after some seconds. Ibuki, upon seeing Mikami, assumes that she is a tribal end, and he looks scared to an extent. After Mikami makes her intentions clear, Ibuki tries to run away as she refuses to hand Kuro over to her. His attempts to fun fail as Mikami easily catches up to him and chokes him. As Mikami suspends Ibuki in midair, she notices something about him that surprises her. Meanwhile, Kuro gets a bad feeling about Ibuki and heads out of the house to find him. When she gets to the door, she bumps into Aknai and then reveals that something might have happened to Ibuki. At the spot, a call comes in for Kuro, and Mikami specifies the place they will meet to get Ibuki back. Later that evening, Excel and Steiner observe some tribal ends at a building, and they proceed on their mission to raise the building. After the raid at the building, lots of tribal ends lie dead at the scene, and Steiner discovers a pile of drained Mototsumitamas. It turns out that a special rock was used to drain the Mototsumitamas of their terra so that they could make more tribal ends. Later that night, Mikami arrives at her house with Ibuki, and she takes him inside. While in Mikami's residence, Mikami offers Ibuki some tea, and after some time, Ibuki asks some questions about Mikami. Here, he finds out that Mikami is of the Ginkgo clan, and she takes jobs from the Shishigami clan and gets paid for them. Moving on, 
Mikami tells Ibuki that he is a sub, meaning that he will die when he sees his doppelganger. Also, it turns out that a contract between a Mototsumikama and a sub is not compatible, and Mikami leaves the table when she tries to explain why. A room in the house hosts the old man, and Mikami proceeds to his position. She then gives him the medicine she got from completing jobs for Hiyu. Soon, Akani arrives at the entrance of Mikami's house, and Kuro proceeds to save Ibuki. Kuro's presence causes Mikami to leave the old man and go to find out if someone entered her property. Meanwhile, Kuro arrives at Ibuki's position and looks excited. Meanwhile, Ibuki is pissed that Kuro did not reveal that he is a sub. Soon, Mikami arrives at the spot and mocks Kuro for making a contract with subs. Here, she reveals that subs die off, and because of that, Ibuki looks stunned. Minutes later, Shingo the old man proceeds out of the house and states that he is a living example of why subs cannot bond with Tomatsumi Thomas, as he aged massively compared to his original age, while being bound to Mikami. Shingo is believed to be in his 30s, but he looks like a 70-year-old. After Ibuki and Kuro find out about Shingo's situation, they look shocked, and Kuro feels bad for Mikami's contractee, Shingo. Following that, Mikami begins to attack Kuro, and their battle starts immediately. However, Kuro barely keeps up with Mikami because she has not fully recovered her strength. Ibuki, who spectates the battle from a distance, worries about Kuro, and thinks that she will die. Kuro gets back up on her feet and places her fist on Mikami's chest. As a result, Mikami looks confused as she wonders what Kuro is trying to do, but she pays a price as Kuro uses her exceed on her throwing her to the ground in the process. Although Shingo is weak and prone to death, he intends for Mimiki to use his Terra and fight against Kuro. Following that, the battle between Kuro and Mikami continues as Mikami uses her exceed against Kuro, which gives her the advantage in their fight. Parties intend to finish the fight in a single blow so that their contractees will not suffer the Terra deficit. One thing leads to another, and Mikami gets Kuro to the floor and punches her severely. While Kuro lies on the ground, she waits for the best opportunity to use her exceed, and she uses it when she sees an opening. After using her exceed, she finds out that Mikami is not defeated, and she pays the price as Mikami hits her with a nasty punch. Unfortunately, Shingo dies because Mikami drained him of his last Terra while fighting against Kuro. His death hurts Mikami so much that she weeps while holding his body in her arms. Later that night, Ibuki eats dinner with Akane and Kuro at the same table. While at it, Akane confirms that she will be joining Ibuki on his trip to Okinawa, and Kuro is happy about it. Meanwhile, Toshiro, a tribal end, who listens to Akane's conversation from his car, communicates Ibuki's next plans to Hiyu over the phone, which includes the fact that Ibuki is traveling to Okinawa. On the other hand, Hiyu, who is on a call with Toshiru, meets his lab in ruins as he finds out that all his men are dead. The operation that Excel and her team carried out in the lab leaves Hiyu pissed, and he tells Toshiru to find out the people responsible for destroying his lab. The following day, two unidentified teenagers run away from some men dressed in suits. Elsewhere, Akane, Ibuki, and Kuro all head to the airport to catch a flight, and while on the way, they see some tribal ends from a distance. Because of that, Akane steps on the brakes and stops the car screeching the tires in the process. After Kuro and the others get out of the car, they see the tribal ends attacking Yakumo and Rihanna, the teenagers from earlier. Even as Akane suggests that they help Yakumo and Rihanna, Kuro looks unbothered for some reason and states that everything will be fine. Along the line, Yakumo assumes an offensive position and single-handedly defeats all the tribal ends present at that spot, leaving Ibuki and Akane stunned. After Yakumo sees Kuro, he addresses her as a princess and moves towards her to pay his respects. The fact that Kuro is addressed as a princess seems weird to Ibuki, and he proceeds to ask why. It turns out that Kuro is the princess of Yakumo's clan, and Yakumo confirms this. Also, Yakumo is a Mototsumitama who formed a contract with Rihanna, his contractee. Kuro reveals that she made a contract with Ibuki, but Yakumo looks shocked as he hears this because he detects little Terra from Ibuki. Because of that, he quickly realizes that Ibuki is a sub and not a master root. Moving on, Yakumo reveals that Rihanna escaped from the Kayonji group after they made her a master root. The fact that Yakumo reveals that Rihanna escaped from the Kayonji group leaves Ibuki and Kuro shocked. Minutes later, Akane and the others, including Yakimo, proceed on the journey to the airport. While on the way, Rihanna begins to spill the dark secrets of the Kayonji Group. Although the Kayonji Group is a huge company that manages other firms, Rihanna reveals that they produce master roots behind the scenes. Furthermore, she states that the company exerts control over master roots and provides lodging and other luxuries to the master roots. She then adds Tot she escaped because she was to be used as an experiment in the company. Sometime in the past when Rihanna tried to escape from the Kayonji Group, some tribal ends tried to stop her, but Yakumo, who was present at the time, came to her rescue, and this is how they met. Soon, the conversation in the car gets to a point where Yakumo speaks of Reishin, who is Kuro's brother. After Kuro confirms Reishin's identity as her brother, 
she agrees to tell Ibkui the whole truth about her past. At the airport, Yakumo, Rihanna, and Akane sit at a spot and eat lunch, while Ibuki is somewhere listening to Kuro's story. Here, Kuro reveals that her clan lived in a pure land, a world different from the one humans live in. She adds that the land was the home to all Mototsumitamas. A few years ago, Kuro sits with her brother who speaks about the nature of the Raiseki. The pure land is protected by a huge Raiseki which permits a huge amount of Terra to flow through it. One day, Kuro's mother performs a dream-gazing ceremony, and after the ritual is over, she does not look pleased with the dream she saw. Later that day, Yakumo runs towards Kuro and reveals that Rishin is killing members of their clan. After she receives this info, she proceeds to confirm things for herself because she does not believe that her brother will do such. On the way to see her brother, Rishin, she sees a bunch of dead bodies on the floor and panics as a result. Soon, she arrives at her brother's location and finds her mother tied dead to a rock. Kuro's mom's death leaves Kuro in pain, and she asks Raishin why he killed her. Yet Raishin replies stating that he intends to descend into the lower realm and create a new world, adding those who try to stop him will perish. Back in real time, Ibuki is done listening to Kuro's story, and he wonders why Raishin killed Kuro's mother. Seconds later, Hiyu arrives at their location, leaving Kuro somewhat terrified. It turns out that Hiyu was exiled from the Pure Land because he captured humans, and performed contract-related experiments. Because of those experiences, he was able to grant the power of Mototsumitamas to humans, resulting in the creation of tribal ends. Still at the airport, Kuro demands her brother's location, but Hiyu agrees to give it to her if she agrees to be his. Also, Hiyu tries to kill Ibuki because he believes that it is a sin for someone like Ibuki to form a contract with Kuro. Because of that, a battle begins between Kuro and Hiyu as Kuro intends to protect Ibuki. At first, Kuro barely keeps up with Hiyu because she is weak, but Ibuki ups the fighting plane as he performs a synchro with her. Although Kuro now has a fighting chance against Hiyu, she fails to defeat Hiyu with her exceed, as it has little effect on him. Meanwhile, Akane worries about Ibuki and Kuro because they are not in the airport's main building yet. After some seconds, Rihanna and Yakumo arrive at Ibuki's position only to see Kuro being choked by Hiyu. Because of that, Yakumo performs a synchro with his contractee, Rihanna, and then proceeds to attack Hiyu. Because Yakumo manages to keep up with Hiyu, Hiyu retreats stating that he will reveal his contractee soon. Minutes after the battle, Toshiru meets up with Hiyu and reports that he found Yakumo and his contractee, Rihanna. For some reason, Hiyu chokes Toshio in mid-air, then eliminates him by bursting his throat open. Next, Ibuki sits beside Kuro at the airport and remembers that Kuro lost her mother. Kuro is moved to tears after Ibuki states that she should let her emotions out if she feels hurt. Minutes later, Ibuki consoles her and then promises to fight with her even though he is a sub. The following day, Ibuki sits in a plane heading for Okinawa City, and during the flight period, he remembers something that happened earlier. Some days ago, Excel gave Ibuki a ring called the Power of Thousand, which reacts to the pure Terra of a contractee. In the present, Akane sits beside Ibuki in the plane and she leans on Ibuki and grabs onto his arm. Ibuki, who feels uncomfortable at the time, states that it is weird for childhood friends to have their hands all over each other. On the contrary, Akane states that Ibuki was the one who wanted to hold hands with her when they were younger. Following that, Akane ignores Ibuki and continues to lean on him. At an airport, Kuraki welcomes Master Roots to Okinawa as they just got off an airplane from Tokyo City. Kuraki then travels in a convoy with the Master Roots and he seeks help from one of them for a top-secret project hosted by Kayonji Group, which is the company he works for. He then explains that a meeting will be held later that day where the full details of their assistance will be explained. After Ibuki and the others arrive at Okinawa City, Kuro detects unusual traces of Terra around the city, and she assumes that a third party is involved. At midday, Ibuki heads to an outdoor restaurant with Akane and Ibuki to have lunch. After eating, they all head on a mini road trip to Ibuki's granddad's house. While on the road, Kuro observes the wonderful scenery and compares the view with that of Tokyo. The water reflects sunlight in such a way that gives a sparkling effect. The road trip comes to an end as Ibuki and the others arrive at a settlement where Ibuki's granddad lives. On getting to Ibuki's granddad's house, they find him training in the dojo, and Kuro admires his fighting technique. After Ibuki meets with his granddad, he presents the picture that Excel gave him earlier, hoping to find out more details about the photo. While in the meeting with Ibuki's granddad, Ibuki finds out that his mom was not in Okinawa at the time that the picture was taken. Because his granddad does not know the doppelganger system, he hesitates to explain the situation, but Kuro interrupts, 
and begins to explain things to Ibuki's granddad. While Kuro speaks, Ibuki interrupts her, saying that they are there to perform an investigation about the picture. Also, his granddad states that they can all stay in his house as long as they want, adding that they are in for a treat in the evening. Later taut evening, Kuro displays her weird appetite as she eats her meal rapidly. Although Akani gets drunk easily, she accepts a shot of alcohol from Ibuki's granddad and takes more after finishing the first one. After taking some shots of alcohol, Akani gets drunk and leans on Ibuki's granddad. Here, she reveals that Ibuki ignores her despite knowing that she has feelings for him. In a short while, Akani passes out alongside Ibuki's granddad while Ibuki sits outside and looks at the stars. Soon, Kuro joins him at his spot and tells him that he seems more relaxed ever since he got there. For some reason, Ibuki looks happy, and he lays his back on the floor to rest. The following day, Ibuki and the others proceed to the beach where they put on swimsuits and play in the water. At this point, they all enjoy themselves as they play together in the water. At sunset, they all leave the beach and head back to the house. On the way to the house, two Mototsumitamas proceed out of the woods and arrive in front of Ibuki. At first, Ibuki looks shocked, but he feels better when Kuro reveals that they are Mototsumitamas. Seconds later, both Mototsumitamas attack Ibuki and Kuro, because they think that they are working for the bad guys. They both perform coordinated attacks at Kuro, giving her no chance to land a single attack. Along the line, Ibuki gets retrained by a rope tied to his neck, and he loses access to air in the process. As life slips away from Ibuki, he watches as Kuro gets beaten to the ground. Because of Kuro's condition, Ibuki triggers the power of Thousand, creating a massive Terra Surge, allowing him to release himself from the ropes. After that, Ibuki seizes the opportunity to perform a synchro with Kuro to even the fighting plane against her opponents. After performing a synchro with Ibuki, Kuro easily defeats her opponents after landing nasty attacks. Seconds later, Makana, one of the Mototsumitamas, begins to cry because she thinks she failed in protecting the settlement. Because of that, Kani consoles her, stating that she is not her enemy. Meanwhile, an unidentified person watches from a distance. Later that evening, Kuraki addresses the master roots gathered at an event hosted by the Kayonji group. It turns out that the Kayonji group intends to create a world ruled by them by temporarily disrupting the flow of Terra. As Kuraki rounds up addressing the master roots, he tells them to remain within the confinement of the hotel, adding that they can do anything they want within the hotel's premises. Later that evening, Ibuki hosts a meeting with the Mototsumitamas from earlier at his granddad's house. While in the meeting, Kakuma states that the Shishigami clan arrived at Okinawa about seven years ago to find the Reiseki hidden in the sacred precincts. He adds that his clan was attacked by the Shishigami clan because they were the ones tasked with protecting the sacred precincts. The picture that Ibuki holds is a clear representation of the attack in Okinawa that happened years ago, and Kakuma gets horrifying flashbacks when he sees it. Because of this new information, Ibuki wonders if his mother has a hand in exterminating Kakuma's clan because he thinks she is the one in the picture. Even as Ibuki tries to clarify that he is not after the Raiseki, Kakuma emphasizes that his region is in danger. After that, he gets upset and leaves the house with Makana stating that both of them will protect the Raiseki. Elsewhere, Kuraki receives info from the unidentified man from earlier that Ibuki is present in Okinawa. After that, he tells the spy to keep trailing Ibuki, adding that should do what his superiors say. For some reason, Kuraki is interested in the Reiseki, and he looks forward to seeing Ibuki. That same night, Ibuki sits alone outside his granddad's house and looks at the photo Excel gave him one more time. Also, he wonders why Kuro's brother is obsessed with destroying the Reiseki in Okinawa. Back in Tokyo City, Yuki looks worried because she has not become a master root yet. She aims to look for her doppelganer so she can become a master root, and she tells Kuro's brother, Raishin, to hasten the search for her doppelganer so she can become a master root as soon as possible. Yuki intends to become a master root so she can prove herself to her family so her dad can acknowledge her abilities. It looks as if Yuki is in a relationship with Raishin because they both have a brief moment of intimacy in the office. Moving on, Raishin reveals that he wants to go to Okinawa, adding that they have some unwanted guests in the building. Just outside the skyscraper, Excel, Steiner, and some other Mototsumitamas from the Noble One assemble in front of the Sayonji headquarters. On getting into the building, Excel and her team are surrounded by tribal ends dressed in suits. Although Excel and her team are greatly outnumbered, Steiner looks confident and then proceeds to fight his opponents. Minutes later, Bernhard, Steiner's right-hand man, takes over the battle on that floor as Excel, Yakumo, Rihanna, and Steiner proceed to the top floor to face Raishin. On getting to Raishin's office, they meet Raishin who looks unothered as he sips wine and leans on his desk. Moving on, 
Steiner questions Raishin's intentions because he is supposed to maintain the balance of coexistence as he is a Mototsumitama. For some reason, Raishin believes that he owes Steiner no explanation because he thinks that Steiner thinks that he is in the wrong. Along the line, excels something unusual about Raishin as Terra violently moves around Raishin's body. Minutes later, Steiner performs a synchro with Excel and proceeds to fight Raishin. During the battle between Raishin and Steiner, Raishin realizes that Steiner is strong and he moves swiftly to dodge Steiner's brute attacks. Because Raishin intends to end the battle quickly, he summons a powerful Chi Blast and aims it at Steiner which destroys part of his office in the process. After that, Raishin takes victory over the battle and proceeds out of his office leaving his men to do a cleanup. Just as Raishin leaves his office, the fog clears out and it turns out that Steiner survived the blast. Excel holds a powerful hex barrier that saves Steiner from Raishin's attack and because of that, the tribal ends proceed to fight Excel and the others. Yakumo performs a synchro with Rihanna and then defeats a couple of tribal ends using his incredible speed to his advantage. More tribal ends proceed from a door to fight, but Steiner uses his Exceed that features speed clones to defeat all of them. Next, Steiner and the others proceed to the rooftop to meet up with Raishin, but they are late as the chopper has taken off already. Elsewhere, Yuki heads to her destination in a car and while on the way, she thinks deeply about her situation. She intends to become filled with Terra as soon as possible and form a contract with her lover, Rishin. Later that night, Kuraki appreciates his spy, Raiga, for completing his assigned mission. For some reason, Kuraki looks happy, and it looks as if he has some plans of his own. Sometime in the past, Kuraki met with Rishin in his office because of his knowledge of the Doppelinger system. He explains the concept of the Doppelinger system to Rishin using the investigations that he carried out in the past. At this point, Raishin looks interested in what Kuraki is saying as he pays attention to his words. In the end, Kuraki asks to find out if he is a root or a sub. The way Kuraki presents himself intrigues Raishin and because of that, Raishin is moved to make an offer to Kuraki. Raishin offers to make Kuraki a master root so that he can help him out in his plans and Kuraki agrees to the offer. He took the offer because he thought that Raishin wanted the Mototsumitama and he mastered roots to cooperate and create an ideal world, but that is not the case. Back in real time, Kureka tells Raiga that Raishin wants to destroy the world and throw it into chaos. It turns out that Raiga is a Mototsumitama, and he holds a grudge against Raishin because he destroyed his clan. The following day, Ibuki sees his mother's doppelganger, Shinobu, and at first he assumes that she is his mum. Ibuki holds the same picture in his hands and asks Shinobu if she is the one there. At this point, Ibuki confirms that Shinobu was in Okinawa about seven years ago and he asks why she fought against the Motatsumitams in Okinawa Island. Following that, Shinobu does not give a complete answer to Ibuki's question, and she goes on to sympathize with Ibuki for causing his mother's death. She feels bad for causing his mother's death, because if Ibuki's mother did not see her, she would still be alive. Elsewhere, Kakuma and Makana sit in the woods and after some time, they get lured out by a stone. It turns out that Raiga lured them out, and Makana looks happy to see him. Unfortunately, Raiga lands a nasty kick on Makana and knocks Kakuma out cold. After some time, Kuro meets up with Makana and finds out that Kakuma was kidnapped. After getting this info, he proceeds to search for Kakuma, but Hiyu arrives at the scene before she leaves. Because Hiyu is part of the people responsible for destroying Makana's clan, Makana gets upset and proceeds to attack Hiyu, but fails as she gets beaten and tossed to the ground. Hiyu, who is obsessed with getting Kuro by all means, uses Makana as leverage to get Kuro. Along the line, Kuro tries to fight Hiyu, but she fails as she does not have enough juice to fight someone as powerful as Hiyu at the time. Following that, Hiyu knocks her out cold after revealing that Ibuki is in danger. Back at Ibuki's position, Shinobu lays her hands on Ibuki's chest and begins to drain him of his Terra. After draining all of Ibuki's Terra, Ibuki is left unconscious and Shinobu heads out of the scene. Just before she leaves, Ibuki regains consciousness and this leaves Shinu shocked because Ibuki is not meant to have the strength to move after losing that much Terra. Even though Ibuki is in a critical condition, he still intends to go and save Ibuki and he gets on his feet to do so. At this point, Shinobu is the only person standing between Ibuki's plans and he uses his ring, the power of Thousand, to project lots of energy and aims it at Shinobu. Meanwhile, Kuro lies restrained by Hiyu who seems to be doing some creepy stuff I would rather not say. After some time, Akane goes out to look for Ibuki as she has not seen him in a while. On the way, she sees Makana lying unconscious on the ground and wonders what happened. In a cave, Hiyu restrains Kuro in a way that prevents her from escaping. When Kuro tries to escape, she fails as Hiyu grabs her legs and throws her to a wall. He then begins to spank Kuro repeatedly, and after some time, Kuro manages to land an attack on Hiyu that tosses him to the ground. At this point, Ibuki is in the cave, 
and Kuro is happy to see him. Just as she tries to escape with Ibuki, Hiyu manages to catch up to her, preventing her from reaching Ibuki. Elsewhere, Ibuki's granddad takes care of Makana, who is still unconscious at the time. Akane also worries about Kuro, as she realizes that she might be missing. Seconds later, Makana regains consciousness, and runs out of the house to search for Kakuma. After Makana runs away, Akane and Ibuki's granddad run after her to join her in the search. Both parties spit up in different directions because they lose track of Makana after some seconds. Meanwhile, Kakuma regains consciousness in a building, and after he opens his eyes, he sees Raishin. Kakuma vows not to give Raishin any information about the sacred precincts, but he looks shocked after Raishin reveals that he is the key to the sacred precincts. Back in the cave, Hiyu uses his speed to evade all of Kuro's attacks, and after some time, Ibuki uses his ring to aim an energy blast at Hiyu. Ibuki misses his target as Shinobu is in time to tell Hiyu to dodge. After that, Shinobu attacks Ibuki who is weak at the time and sets him to the ground. It turns out that Hiyu's contract D is Shinobu, and they both perform a synchro giving Hiyu an unfair fighting advantage against Kuro. Furthermore, Hiyu uses his Exceed against Kuro, which features fast-moving water droplets. The water is turned into ice at some point and sent as bullets to Kuro. Even as Kuro manages to dodge some of the ice projections, some of them catch up to her and restrain her to a wall. As Kuro raises her head, she sees Shinobu draining Ibuki of his Terra, and she wonders what she is doing. When Hiyu reveals that Shinobu is draining Ibuki of this turfa, she looks shocked as a human is not supposed to be capable of such. Hiyu then reveals that Shinobu is a minus root and not a master root. Shinobu became a minus root in the past because she killed her root, which is Ibuki's mother. Some years in the past, Shino learned that she could avoid the fate of being a sub if she killed her root. At that time, Hiyu offered to look for her roots when she made a contract with him. One day when Shinobu finally found her root, she killed her by hitting her with her car. Back in the present, Shinobu brags about the fact that she killed Ibuki's mother and became a minus root. Back at Ibuki's granddad's house, Akane arrives at the scene after she has difficulties finding Makana. Seconds later, Kurakli arrives at the scene and introduces himself to Akane. He offers to retrieve Akane and take her to a place where Ibuki is. Meanwhile, Ibuki loses his life force gradually, as Terra is drained away from his body. Kuro stands restrained a few meters away from Ibuki, and Hiyu uses his exceed to hurt Kuro. Several years ago, Shinobu experienced nothing good, especially when she was a child. A series of sad events occurred in her life that knocked her into depression. Because of that, she agreed to change her fate by taking advantage of the doppelganger system presented by Hiyu. The fact that her roots would absorb her Terra and become happier in life did not sit right with her, and she agreed to do the unthinkable to change it. Back in real time, Sinobu tries to get Ibuki to agree with her ideas, adding that she will make Hiyu turn him into a minus root if he does. This form of happiness does not follow Ibuki's ideas, and he emphasizes that Shinobu is not happy. Even as Shinobu claims to be happy by being a minus root, Ibuki can see through her and states that she does not seem happy at all. Ibuki then rejects her offer, stating that he does not want that type of happiness. At this point, Shinobu is getting quite emotional because what Ibuki is saying is true. Ibuki then punches Shinobu in the face, despite having little to no Terra left in his body. After that, he gets up and performs a synchro with Kuro, who was being punched severely at the time. Kuro, after getting a power boost from Ibuki, proceeds to resume her battle with Hiyu. While at it, Ibuki focuses his Terra on Kuro so she can perform her Exceed and finish off Hiyu in a single shot. After Kuro performs her Exceed on Hiyu, the impact of the lethal punch sends him flying several meters away to a wall. Meanwhile, Ibuki falls on his knees as he looks weak as a result of his depleted Terra. The fact that he had to concentrate such an amount of Terra at the time increased his stress level, and Kuro comes in to support him. Seconds later, Shinobu lies on the floor with tears in her eyes, unsure whether she is going to live or die. After acknowledging that she did not attain happiness through her actions in the past, Ibuki takes pity on her and carries her corpse away as she gives up the ghost momentarily. Meanwhile, Raiga watches what goes on from a distance, and it looks as if he was there the whole time. After Ibuki gets out of the cave, he sees Kuraki, and it turns out that they have got history. Seconds later, Ibuki spits blood from his mouth and falls unconscious. Some years in the past, Kuraki, who was named Sawamura at that time, passed away shockingly. One morning, Ibuki gets to school and finds out that his classmate, Kuraki, is dead, and he goes to pay his last respects to him. Because of Kuraki's death, Ibuki thinks that his fate is sealed as he is bound to lose any loved one he cares about. In the present, Ibuki gains consciousness at Kuraki's residence and sees Akane with Kuro standing beside his bed. After he sits up, he sees Kuraki, who he thought was dead. 
and asks to confirm if he is Sawamura. Kuraki confirms that he is alive, explaining that the Sawamura he knew back then is dead. He then proceeds to tell Ibuki that he wants to help him given the situation that he is in. At this point, Kuraki reveals that he wants to rebel against Ration and he will need Ibuki's help to do so. The fact that Kuraki was still alive all these years confuses Ibuki as he needs time to process his existence given the fact that he is recovering. Because of that, Kuraki begins to explain what happened in the past that led to the death of Sawamura, his old self. Some years in the past, Kuraki formerly known as Sawamura found out about the Doppeliner system and met with Raishin at his office. The meeting with Raishin resulted in Kuraki working under him, and as a result, they had to handle his disappearance. To ensure that Kuraki disappears, his sub originally named Kuraki dies, and Sawamura assumes the death of the boy making others believe that he was dead. The dead kid was then buried as Sawamura and Kuraki worked under the Kayonji group as planned. After working for Raishin for a few months, Kuraki found out that Raishin was only concerned with how he could make use of humans and the Doppeliner system for his own sake, because Kuraki hopes to create an ideal world, the idea of using humans contradicts his beliefs. Raishin at that time arranged for numerous people to meet their subs, and as a result, a lot of people died, resulting in the creation of Master Roots. In the present, Kuraki intends to use the Doppeliner system to create an ideal world. But for some reason, Kuor opposes his ideals, stating that the system should not be controlled. In response, Kuraki drops valid points, stating that the fate of humans is manipulated by the Doppeliner system. And then he questions why Mototsumitams are allowed to be involved in a system Tot does not relate to them. Some years in the past, Kuraki was in the same class as Ibuki, and he was often picked on because he was smart. One day, a student tries to pick on him, but he gets upset in the process and grabs Kuraki by his shirt. Ibuki then arrives at the scene and lures the bullies away from Kuraki. From that time, Kuraki begins talking to Ibuki, and he addresses him as a hypocrite because Ibuki assumes Teddy is happy. Meanwhile, in reality, he does not open his heart to anyone. Later that day, Kuraki takes note of the time when Ibuki declines an outing with some students unconsciously. After school hours, both students leave school together on Ibuki's bike. On the way, Ibuki asks questions relating to why Kuraki does not relate with his classmates. When Kuraki is done answering the question, he asks Ibuki the same thing, and Ibuki replies stating that he is scared of fate. He believes that the people he treasures will die, and a series of sad events that occurred in his life makes him accept it. In the end, Kuraki advises Ibuki to go against fate, adding that he will try and make use of fate too. Because of this, he seems confident that he will not die even if he becomes friends with Ibuki. Back in the present, Ibuki states that he assumed he could not escape fate after Kuraki's fake death. Kuraki then offers to help Ibuki, promising to prevent him an accidental death in the event of meeting his root of the other sub. He looks forward to hearing Ibuki's response, as Ibuki cannot reply at the time. Moving on, Kuro steps outside and meets Kuraki as he stands alone, having a good view of the horizon. Kuro then asks Kuraki about the whereabouts of her brother Reishin because she intends to defeat him. After Kuro makes her intentions clear, Kuraki reveals that he wants to defeat Reishin too, Adding Tot the path toward the Reiseki will be exposed soon. Kuraki is sure that Reishin will be at that spot which will allow Kuro to face him there. Back in Kuraki's house, Ibuki regains consciousness and tries to find Kuro, but Akane obstructs him, stating that he should get some rest. Akane has always cared deeply about Ibuki, and she does not want him to die. She gets emotional as she expresses her feelings, stating that she does not want a world where Ibuki does not exist, adding that she always wants to be by his side. Tears roll down Akane's eyes, and Ibuki consoles her. He apologizes for making her worried, but Akane emphasizes that he should stay by his side. Meanwhile, Kuro eavesdrops on their conversation behind the door, and then runs off after listening for a while. When Ibuki is done with Akane, he proceeds out of the room and goes to find Kuro. When he gets outside with Akane, he sees Kuraki, and then finds out that Kuro left the house. Also, Kuraki states that Kuro intends for him to wait in the house, but after Ibuki hears this. Elsewhere, Ibuki tries to look for her brother, and on the way, she bumps into Makana, who is looking for Kakuma. Makana begs Ibuki to join her, and look for Kakuma, and Kuro agrees. At the passage leading to the river, Raiga suspends Kakuma in mid-air, and then uses his fist to pierce through Kakuma's chest, killing him in the process. He puts Kakuma's blood into the water, and it causes something strange to happen. Ibuki observes a bright light from a distance, and he questions Kuraki about what is going on. Here, Kuraki reveals that the barrier over the sacred precincts has been removed, causing the sacred precincts to appear. However, Ibuki leaves Kuraki's house even as it goes against Kuro's wishes. He intends to help Kuro because she cannot fight properly on her own, even if it will cost his life. The fact that Ibuki is leaving makes Akane get emotional about Ibuki. Just as Ibuki departs on his mission, 
Akane runs towards him and hugs him. She then goes in for a kiss, and after that she tells Ibuki that she is waiting for him to come back. Later that evening, Rishin heads to the sacred precincts on a speedboat while Makana holds Kakuma's corpse at the place where he was killed. Kuro is present at the time and tells Makana to wait for her because she wants to go alone and defeat her brother. Seconds later, Ibuki arrives behind Kuro and reveals that he will join her to fight Rishin. Elsewhere, Kuraki tells Akane to stay in his house, adding that his abode is the safest place she can be because she is a sub. The fact that Kuraki called Akane a sub strikes fear in Akane making her look terrified. Furthermore, Kuraki reveals that she is the sub of Kayanji Group's CEO, Kayanji Yuki, meaning that Akane will be killed if one of Yuki's operatives sees her. Minutes later, Reishin arrives at the sacred precincts and proceeds to destroy the Raiseki. Before that, Ibuki arrives with Kuro intending to prevent Reishin from destroying the Raiseki. Later that evening, Kuraki proceeds on a speedboat heading to the sacred precincts with Raiga. Back at the sacred precincts, Kuro questions Rishin on his reason for destroying their world in the past. She states that she cannot forgive him. After Kuro reveals her intention, which is to defeat Rishin, Rishin mocks her because she formed a contract with a sub. Because of that, Kuro becomes triggered and performs a synchro with Ibuki and uses her exceed against Rishin. The impact of the punch causes a massive surge of energy at the scene. Unfortunately, Kuro's exceed has no impact on Rishin as he easily blocks it and throws Kuro to the ground. Even after expending so much Terra, Kuro proceeds to fight her brother and uses her speed to her advantage. During their battle, Rishin notices that Kuro is still agile even after using her exceed. He puzzles if Ibuki is controlling the amount of Terra that Kuro is using. In the heat of the moment, Kuro sees an opening and Ibuki compels her to use her exceed one more time. Reishin sees through her attacks and moves swiftly to dodge the imminent attack. Also, Ibuki projects some amount of energy blasts at Reishin via his ring, the power of Thousand. While Reishin dodges all projects sent at him, he lands a nasty punch on Kuro that sends her falling to the ground. When Kuro gets up on her feet, Ibuki falls weak to the ground as a result of expending too much Terra. Despite Ibuki's condition, he still wants Kuro to fight, but it does not look possible as his Terra is massively depleted. Soon, Yakumo arrives at the scene with his contractee, Rihanna, to protect Ibuki and Kuro. Also, Steiner arrives just behind Raishin and is excited that he gets to meet Raishin once more. Excel seems confident at this point and then tells Yakuma and the others to leave so she can face off Raishin with her contractor, Steiner. After Kuro and the others leave the scene, Steiner gives off a weird smile as he intends to dance with Rishin. Meanwhile, Kuraki, who is on sea at this point, debriefs Raiga on the task ahead. Moving on, Steiner and Excel are the only persons who stand between the Raiseki and Raishin. Before the much-awaited battle begins between Steiner and Raishin, Steiner begs Raishin to show no mercy to him. After that, Excel and Steiner perform a synchro and both warriors proceed to fight themselves. At first, Steiner proceeds with a power punch in mid-air, and it cancels out as Raishin does the same. Upon landing on the ground, Steiner uses his incredible speed to go after Raishin, but for some reason, Rushin manages to keep up with his speed. As overpowered as Raishin is, he recognizes Steiner's skills and commends him for it. It looks as if Steiner is enjoying their battle and he seizes an opportunity to land a nasty punch at Raishin, causing him to spit blood in the process. As Raishin lies pinned to a wall, Steiner attacks him with a deadly punch. Surprisingly, Raishin blocks it as he holds Steiner's fist with a single hand leaving Steiner shocked in the process. Following that, Steiner pushed several meters backward after taking a counterattack from Raishin. He then goes berserk mode on Raishin and performs a Hulk smash on the ground that sends Raishin flying in mid-air. At this point where their battle is aerial, Steiner proceeds to punch Raishin, but he misses his target as the punch gets blocked. Elsewhere, Yakumo and the others proceed out of the cave and they get surrounded by Triba Ends. The fact that mere tribal ends are surrounding Yakumo provokes him, and he performs a synchro with Rihanna and fights them one by one. The battle between Raishin and Steiner gets to a point where Excel notices that both parties will die if they keep fighting. Even at that, Steiner hopes to end his battle at once, and he activates his Exceed. Furthermore, things get interesting after Steiner activates his Exceed, which features speed clones. As fast as Raishin is, he encounters some difficulties as he tries to dodge all attacks from Steiner's speed clones. Along the line, Raishin gets surrounded by lots of Steiner's clones, and he takes a massive beating from them in the process. Seconds later, Steiner assumes victory in the battle after landing a clone combined punch on Raishin that sets him falling meters away from him. Shockingly, Raishin gets up on his feet and arrives behind Steiner preparing a power Terra Blast at Steiner and Excel. Steiner is pretty convinced that the blast will not have any effect on him because Excel used her hex wall to block it in the past. As Raishin sends the energy blast at his opponents, 
Excel puts up her hex wall and blocks it. After Excel survives the first projection, Raishin launches a series of projected Terra blasts at the hex wall, leaving Excel curious about Raishin's Terra levels. Steiner observes what is going on and notices that things will go back if Raishin keeps up with the blasts. With this in mind, he uses his speed clones to distract Raishin and then lands a fatal punch on Raishin. On the other hand, Raishin puns clash with Steiner's causing a massive surge of Terra that vibrates the entire cave. Just outside the cave, Yakumo is done defeating the tribal ends, and then he sees one of Steiner's clones running out of the cave with Excel, who is unconscious at the time. It turns out that Steiner sent his clone to save Excel from the battle, so she could survive. When Excel regains consciousness, she weeps as she sees the clone fade away. Back in the cave, Steiner lies weak on the ground after having a satisfactory battle with Raishin. He gives up the ghost after acknowledging the pleasure that came with fighting an opponent like Raishin. Although Raishin and Steiner have separate ideals and beliefs, Raishin vows never to forget Steiner's name in life. However, when Raishin tries to destroy the Raisaki, he gets attacked by Raiga, Kuraki's contractor who sends a glowing sword projection at Raishin that pierces through his chest setting stuck at the Raiseki. Kuraki then reveals himself to Raishin stating that Raiga is the Mototsumitama, who formed a contract with him. Because Raishin exterminated Raiga's clan in the past, he seeks vengeance and craves Raishin's death. Also, Kuraki's betrayal stems from the fact that Raishin wants to create a world controlled by only the Mototsumitamas. As Raishin lies pierced to the Raiseki, the Raiseki begins to draw lots of terror to itself, creating a black hole that sucks Raishin in. Just before Raishin gets sucked in, he tells Kuraki that his ideas will not manifest even in his defeat. After Raishin gets sucked into the black hole, a massive explosion occurs that spreads throughout the world. Six months after the incident in Okinawa, the world suffered from the effect of the explosion of the Raiseki. One day, Kuro walks alone covered in a hoodie along the snowy outskirts of Tokyo City. While at it, she gets surrounded by tribal ends who make the mistake of threatening her life. Even at that, Kuro ignores them and tries to walk away but one of them grabs onto her clothes provoking her in the process. Kuro lands multiple attacks on the men in suits rendering some of them immobile and then walks away from the scene without breaking a sweat. A few days later, Karaki's plan to create an ideal world is in progress, as Terra monitoring phones are distributed and used amongst humans. Preparations for the root production project are scheduled to launch soon, where lots of master roots will be produced by sacrificing their subs respectively. Because of the increasing level of master root, Japan's stock continues to rise as compared to other external economies. The plan to place master roots in strategic political positions is already in play, and some leaders hope to change the educational system to favor the master roots. In the end, Karaki wishes to control the fate of humans, and by doing so he believes that he will be able to change the world drastically. On a certain day, Karaki receives info that the Noble One will be launching an attack on them. For some reason, Karaki does not look bothered, and he states that he has made plans already. On the other hand, Colonel Bernhard receives info from his superior telling him to abandon his plan to attack the Kayonji group. Bernhard does not process this information well because he spent time planning a strategize attack on the company's headquarters in Tokyo. The leader of the Noble One, General Gustav, meets with Kuraki at his office, and it seems he is on par with Kuraki's plan for restructuring the human society. Kayonji, Yuki's father, is in attendance and tells General Gustav that he is ready to help if he asks anything of them. Soon the meeting ends after they all come to a peaceful resolve. At sunset, the face of the Kayonji group, Yuki travels in a car with Kuraki to a special event. Because the Kayonji group recently took over a major bank, Kuraki needs to be present at the party to celebrate their victory. He tells Yuki that she doesn't need to attend the party, and Yuki replies by stating that she will carry out her assigned duties. Also, Kuraki reveals that he has secured Yuki's route and confirmed that her other sub is dead, giving Yuki the privilege of moving out public. Soon, they both arrive at the Kayonji Hotel where Kuraki moves up the elevator to see Akani. Because Kuraki claims that Ibuki entrusted Akani to him, he restricts her from leaving the hotel, emphasizing that it is too dangerous. Keita Ibuki is missing at this point, and Akani misses him a lot. Later that evening, Kuraki attends the said event with Yuki and they both walk into a room full of guests. Elsewhere, Yakumo and Rihanna leave Colonel Bernhard because of General Gustav's orders, and they proceed to a point where they meet Kuro, who looks sad at the time. Kuro receives info from Yakumo that the attack on the Kayonji group has been cancelled, and she walks away after hearing this. Because Akani cannot be reached over the phone, Yakumo and Rihanna suspect that she might be dead at the hands of the Kayonji group. Meters away from Yakumo is a building where Ibuki lies unconscious, and his granddad takes care of him. Kuro, who just arrived inside the room, looks happy to see Ibuki, as Makana assists in taking care of him. Ibuki has been in a coma since the incident at Okinawa, 
and Kuro wishes for him to wake up. Still in the building, Colonel Bernhard refuses to leave Tokyo City following General Gustav's orders, and he intends to attack the Kayonji group even as he has few men left. While in his meeting with Yakumo and the others, enemy Mototsu Mitamas and their contractees from the Kayonji group arrive at their location to implement Gustav's order of retreat. Also, the enemy has info that Ibuki might be in the building and they intend to take him to the Kayonji group. When Kuro realizes that Ibuki is in danger, she looks terrified, and she moves quickly to protect him. Yakumo, Bernhard, and the others assume attacking positions to fight off the enemy, while Kuro beats the shit out of some tribal ends approaching Ibuki's room. Just below her, Bernard performs a synchro with his contact D, and fights off the enemy, Motatsumi Thomas. Yakumo does the same, but he encounters difficulties while fighting an enemy more skilled than him. At Kuro's location, she gets distracted and pays a price as an enemy, Mototsumitama, attacks her from behind. The battle that occurs below her goes on to a point where Bernhard and Yakumo get repelled by artificial thousands produced by the Kayonji group. The device is similar to Ibuki's ring, but it creates a hex shield that protects its user. Now Bernhard and the others are put in a difficult position as they are at a disadvantage if they fight their enemy in that state. A level above them, Kuro gets punched through a wall, and she crashes into Ibuki's room, where Ibuki lies unconscious. Seconds later, an enemy Mototsumitama proceeds from behind and begins to strangle Kuro. As Kuro loses access to air, she looks at Ibuki's body and remembers the time when Ibuki fought for her, even when he was at his lowest. Because of that, she frees herself from the enemy's grasp and begins to fight. It gets to a point where Kuro is thrown across the room and she lands on Ibuki's body. Upon making contact with Ibuki's body, Ibuki communicates with her through his mind, telling her to fight. At first, Kuro is shocked at what just happened, but Ibuki assures her that he is filled with Terra. The enemy who watches what goes on from a distance throws Kuro across the room and uses his Exceed to prevent her from performing a synchro. Even at that, Kuro gets up on her feet as she gets filled up with Terra, and then Ibuki wakes up from his coma and orders an Exceed from Kuro. When Kuro uses her Exceed on the enemy, it gets repelled as the enemy uses an artificial hex wall to block her attack. Despite the hindrance of the hex wall, Ibuki orders Kuro to proceed, and she launches a series of Exceeds that shatter the hex wall in the process. The last Exceed sends their battle as Kuro punches the enemy through a wall. Because Ibukio has awakened, Bernhard and the others are now hyped to fight and they destroy enemy shields using their Exceed in the process, while Kuro goes berserk in the remaining tribal ends. After the battle comes to an end, the enemy retreats while Kuro and the others are happy that Ibuki is awake. Later that night, Kayonji observes dinner with his family, and while at it, he reveals that Kuraki will marry Yuki and join the Kayoni family, adding that he will be made vice chairman of the company. The majority of Yuki's siblings sitting at the table do not agree with their father's decision because they expect that one of them will be chosen as vice chairman. The following day, Kuraki receives info about Ibuki's escape, and he orders that Ibuki should be found. Elsewhere, Ibuki, Yakumo, and some others seek sanctuary in the affected part of the city. In the building, Ibuki is worried about Akane, and he regrets handing her over to Kuraki as she is now a hostage. At the top of the building, Kuro stands alone and thinks deeply about her situation. Yakumo arrives at the proof and notices that Kuro is worried. Kuro thinks that all that happened is her fault, and she is unhappy because her brother did not get to answer her question before dying. Kuro is frustrated at this point because she knows that if she fights, she will be draining Ibuki's life force. Back at the Kayonji Hotel, Akane stands and gets a good view of the city, and she wonders how long she will remain in the building. On the other hand, Yuki lies on her bed with her engagement ring and thinks deeply about Reishin. While in bed, she receives a call from her sister telling her that she has been tricked by Karaki. During their conversation, Yuki finds out the location of her route. Akane and her sister urge her to meet up later that day, so they can plan what to do next. Later that day, Yuki awaits her sister at a spot, but when it is time for her sister to be there, Kuraki arrives instead. It turns out that Kuraki is aware of Yuki's plans and he negotiates good terms with Yuki's siblings before meeting with Yuki at that spot. At this point, Yuki looks frustrated and she tells Yuki to kill her if he wants to. The mere fact that Kuraki possesses her root triggers her and she tells him to replace her with her root since they look alike. However, Kuraki mocks her because of her situation and tells her that she cannot do anything without relying on others. Soon, the meeting with Yuki comes to an end as Kuraki tells her that fate will catch up to her one day. The following day, Ibuki decides to meet Kuraki at the Kayonji headquarters. After he makes his intention clear, Yakumo opposes him, stating that the Kayonji group is now stronger than ever, as they have squads of contactees and Mototsumitamas. Even at that, Ibuki intends to go to the Kayonji Gro and save Akane, but Yakumo interrupts him, saying that he cannot come out successful without a plan. 
Fortunately, Colonel Bernhard arrives with his contractee and offers Ibuki and the others a fighting chance against the Kayonji group. After Ibuki agrees, Bernhard's contactee reveals that the Kayonji group is holding a party for the appointment of the new vice chairman. Bernhard wishes to attack the company because he assumes Steiner would have done so if he was still alive. Later that day, Kayonji hosts General Gustav as one of his guests at the party, honored to have him there, and because of that, he introduces Kuraki as the man for the future. Yuki, who stands beside him, gets no recognition of the sort, and she feels sad after Kuraki says some words to her before leaving. Her situation gets worse when some Mototsumitamas notice that she is a sub and mocks her for it. Because of that, she leaves the part outside and enters back into the building. General Gustav's men mount guard around the premises as the event begins. Along the line, Colonel Bernhard, Ibuki, and the others gain access to the building after defeating a bunch of tribal ends. At the time when Kuraki is made vice chairman, he proceeds to drop a speech that captivates the minds of his listeners. Yuki, who listens to the speech from a room, feels bad about herself because she is a sub, and she looks at her bag that has a gun in it. As intrusive thoughts flood into her mind, she picks up the gun, points it at her head, and tries to pull the trigger. Seconds before Yuki pulls the trigger, Ibuki arrives at the scene with Kuro and interrupts Kuraki's speech, making Yuki stop what she was about to do. Furthermore, Kuraki makes fun of Ibuki because he is a sub, and this provokes the guest to laugh at him. Kuro and Ibuki oppose Kuraki's plan to control the world using the Doppeliner system, but Kuraki does not agree with Ibuki's reasoning. Ibuki, on the other hand, vows to crush Kuraki's plans, and this provokes Kuraki to anger. Yuki, who watches their conversation on the TV, overhears an explosion in the building and she wonders what is going on. Because of the explosion, the fire alarms are triggered in the building and all guests run away for their lives. Kayonji, who is upset at the time, questions General Gustav about what is going on, and he replies stating that he will handle the situation. On the other hand, Ibuki questions Kuraki about Akani's whereabouts, while Akani, who is in her room at the time, wonders what is going on. However, Colonel Bernhard and other soldiers from the Noble One, loyal to him, confront General Gustav. Colonel Bernhard, who is the leader of the team, emphasizes that he will not take orders from General Gustav. Rather, he restates that the sole purpose of Marotsumitamas is to protect the balance of coexistence. Even at that, General Gustav leaves Colonel Bernhard after S bunch of soldiers sired to him arrive at the scene. Soon, Colonel Bernhard and his team get surrounded by their ex-colleagues and they all prepare to fight. Back at the event ground, Kuraki tries to run away after he receives intel that someone is trespassing the VIP room. Ibuki and Kuro run behind him, but they get repelled by Raiga. Before Kuraki leaves the scene, he states that his Mototsumitama is strong, adding that he defeated Reishin, Kuro's brother. All that stands between Ibuki's objective is Raiga, and because of that, he triggers a synchro with Kuro so she can fight their opponent. During their battle, Ibuki supplies an amount of Terra to keep Kuro strong enough to keep up with Raiga. Unfortunately, Kuro fails to hit her target when she tries to use her Exceed on Raiga, and as a result, she gets thrown to the ground. Just as Raiga tries to land the finishing attack on Kuro, Colonel Bernhard arrives just in time and saves Kuro from imminent death. His contractee then tells Ibuki and Kuro to leave the premises so they can take on Raiga themselves. Meanwhile, Yuki Kayonji arrives at Akani's room and points a gun at Akani. Akani, who is terrified at this point, finds out that she is not a sub, as Yuki tells her that Kuraki is lying to her. Yuki now has to kill Akani because she has seen her, and if she does not, she will meet the same fate as other subs. Her obsession to live stems from the fact that she wants to be acknowledged by her family and does not mind becoming a minus root to achieve this. Moving on, Yuki holds the gun to Akani's face, intending to pull the trigger. Even as Akani's life is in danger, she feels sorry for Yuki because if she never existed, Yuki would not have to suffer so much. As tears roll down Akani's eyes, Yuki states that a root like her will not understand how she feels, but Akani interrupts her saying that the person she loves is a sub. This revelation leaves Yuki shocked as she was not expecting to hear such. Furthermore, Akani feels bad about herself because she assumes that she was not able to help Ibuki with anything. With everything being said, Yuki encounters difficulties pulling the trigger at Akani. Seconds later, Kuraki arrives in the room, takes her gun away from Yuki, and slaps her to the ground. Kuraki mocks Yuki for her actions and makes fun of her because Yuki made contact with her roots. He then points a gun at Yuki intending to kill her, but Akani blocks Kuraki preventing him from pulling the trigger. Elsewhere, Ibuki and Kuro walk into a room and see Yakumo taking a beating from Shinro, who is also a Mototsumitama. It turns out that Shinro was part of Kuro's clan in the past, and he followed Reishin and left the Pure Lands. Kuro questions Shinro why he betrayed their clan, but he answers by saying that he was following the path of his leader. He then displays his contract crest, which looks to be glowing at the time, signifying that he has performed a synchro with his contractee. His contractee, Mayu's master root, 
stands on a platform and orders Shinra to annihilate Ibuki and Kuro. Soon, a battle begins between Kuro and Shinra as Shinra's contactee supplies him with lots of Terra. Because Shinra's contractee can supply lots of Terra to Shinra, he gets the upper hand in the battle as he easily beats Kuro and knocks her to the ground. Kuro gets up from the ground after managing to recover, and Ibuki orders her to fight. The second clash between Shinra and Kuro leaves them struggling to power themselves with raw strength, and Ibuki intensifies his flow of Terra to Kuro to give her the upper hand in the contest. While on the ground, Shinra realizes that Ibuki is controlling the amount of Terra he is sending to Kuro, and he wonders how Ibuki can use such advanced technique even as he is a sub. With that in mind, his main objective is to defeat Kuro the princess, and he proceeds to resume his battle with her. Along the line, Kuro feels sad about Ibuki because of the amount of Terra he is losing. Even at that, Ibuki tells her to use her Exceed, and when she tries to use it, her contract crest stops glowing, and Shinra wonders if she intends to show him mercy. For some reason, Kuro cannot perform a synchro with Ibuki, and Shinra proceeds to land a nasty punch on her following his contractee's orders. Back at Akani's room, Kuraki questions her on why she is protecting Yuki, who came to kill her. Akani then responds by stating that both of them were tricked and used by him. Upon hearing this, Kuraki laughs and re-emphasizes the fact that both Yuki and Aknai have met meaning that Yuki will die and her luck will be added to Akani. Back at Ibuki's position, he wonders why he cannot perform a synchro with Kuro, but Yakumo states that Kuro might be refusing Terra from Ibuki. He backs this fact by stating that Kuro does not want Ibuki to die from losing lots of Terra, making Kuro reject Terra from Ibuki subconsciously. Afterward, Shinra's contractee orders him to attack, and Yakumo performs a synchro with Rihanna to protect Kuro. During the battle between Yakumo and Shinra, he barely manages to keep up with his opponent and he gets beaten and thrown to the ground. Ibuki, who witnesses what happens, takes matters into his own hands and uses his ring to project energy blasts at Shinra. The projections do not affect Shinra, as he uses his defensive skills and blocks them from harming him. Little did he know that Ibuki was not aiming at him, but rather at the ceiling. Seconds later, the ceiling above Shinra collapses on him, and Akani, who is on the upper floor, falls too. Here, Ibuki is privileged to see Akani after days of waiting, and he receives a hug from her in the process. Kuraki watches from the above signs and leaves the scene in anger while Yuki gets up on her feet. Because Yuki is from the Kayonji family, Ibuki does not feel comfortable around her, but Akani tells him that everything is fine. Yuki then warns all of them present at the scene to leave, because more men will come to abduct them, adding that there is a chopper on the roof. Elsewhere, June, Bernhard's contractee gets attacked by a Mototsumitama when she orders Bernhard to use his Exceed. Because of that, Raiga easily defeats Colonel Bernhard because he is distracted by June's situation. Minutes later, Akani and the others make it to the rooftop where they intend to escape with the chopper. Akani and Yuki make it first to the chopper, but just as Ibuki and the others are about to reach the chopper, Raiga uses his Exceed to destroy the path leading to the chopper. Because of this, Ibuki tells Akani to escape without him so he can buy them some time as they leave. Minutes after the chopper lifts off, the pilot loses control of the chopper for some reason and then crashes into the sea. Back at Ibuki's position, Kuraki presents Ibuki's route, leaving both Ibuki and Kuro terrified. Because of how the Doppelinger system works, Ibuki is bound to die after seeing his route, who sits restrained in a wheelchair. Sneaky Kuraki tries to convince Ibukio to escape his said fate by killing his route so she can survive by becoming a minus route. But Ibuki declines the offer. Even as Ibuki decides not to kill his route, he vows to defeat Kuraki and crush his dreams before he dies. Ibuki's refusal of the offer stems from the fact that he cannot live at the cost of another person's life. Given the situation at hand, Ibuki is at the point where he does not care about living, and he tells Kuro to use his Terra to fight, even if it kills him. Following that, Kuro agrees to Ibuki's terms, performs a synchro with him, and then assumes an attacking position against Raiga. Shinra arrives at the scene and recalls that his battle against Kuro is not over. After Kuro gets charged up with Ibuki's Terra, she proceeds to engage in aerial combat with Shinra. During their battle, Kuro focuses her Terra to a specific point and lands a nasty attack on Shinra, setting him into a wall. The impact of the punch leaves Kuroki and Raiga shocked as they never imagined that Ibuki could do such. After Shinra manages to recover, he resumes his battle with Kuro, where all his punches get blocked by his opponent. Their battle goes on to a point where Kuro sees an opening and focuses all her Terra to use her Exceed on Shinra, ending their battle in the process. As Shinra falls off the skyscraper, he acknowledges Kuro's zeal, and his contractee falls unconscious to the ground. On the other hand, Ibuki falls to the ground after losing much Terra, but he urges Kuro to maintain Synchro with him. For an undisclosed reason, Kuraki is confident that Raiga will win the battle against Kuro at the time. Seconds later, Kuro engages in a brutal battle against Raiga where Raiga uses his Exceed against her following Kuraki's wishes. 
Kuro manages to bodge Raiga's exceed, but she is left exhausted in the process. Even at that, Ibuki still supplies Terra to her, enabling her to get up on her feet. After she recovers, she deploys her exceed against Raiga, but it cancels at first since Raiga used his exceed too. However, Kuro launches a series of exceed on Raiga that throws him to the ground as a result. Unfortunately, Ibuki falls to his knees right, and it turns out that his root has been draining his Terra right from the time when he performed a synchro with Kuro, which explains why Kuraki was confident about winning the battle. Even though Ibuki nears death, he declines the offer of becoming a minus root, and Kuro gets defeated by Raiga as she loses Terra. Soon, Kuro's contract crest stops glowing when she gets on her feet, and she freaks out when she finds out that Ibuki lies almost unconscious on the ground. Just before Ibuki gives up the ghost, he tells Kuro that he has no regrets adding that she should form a contract with a root, so she can be powerful enough to fight. After Ibuki dies, Kuro's contract with him ends, and she gets up on her feet ready to fight alone. When she gets up, something strange happens that leaves Rihanna and Yakumo shocked. Two contract crests appear on Kuro's hands, one on each hand, and the same thing happens to Ibuki's corpse. As Ibuki gets back on his feet, Kuraki wonders how Ibuki is still alive after Ibuki's root has become a master root by draining all of his Terra. It turns out that Kuro's Terra is cycling between Ibuki and Kuro's body making them a single entity. With this new power, Kuraki becomes threatened and he orders Ryaga to finish off Kuro. As Ryaga summons his exceed against Kuro, Kuro does the same, and both attacks clash at a neutral point. Because of the intensified flow of Terra in Kuro's body, she overpowers Raiga's exceed and defeats him in the process. Before Raiga gives up the ghost, he appreciates Kuraki for allowing him to avenge his clan by killing Raishin. Kuraki is frustrated at this point, and he questions why fate betrayed him. He only wishes for Ibuki to support him in his plans, but Ibuki does not think the way he does. After having a twisted conversation about fate, Kuraki offers to start over with Ibuki, but he declines stating that he will crush fate and the doppelganger system along with it. On a lower floor in the building, June gives Bernhard an advantage in battle, as she succeeds in destroying the hex barrier of the enemy. Colonel Bernhard takes victory over the battle, then proceeds out of the room and finds Ibuki with the others. At this point, Colonel Bernhard receives info from Kuro that Raiga has been defeated. Also, he receives intel from one of his men that Yuki's chopper crashed into the sea. This information leaves everyone shocked, especially Ibuki, who cares deeply about Akani. At the scene of the crash, Yuki's body is recovered from the sea, but Akani's body remains missing. Ibuki looks sad at this point as he wonders where Akani might be. Unfortunately, something strange happens that causes lots of civilians to fall unconscious in the city. Even Kuraki is affected, and it turns out that the pure land has appeared plunging the majority of the city into destruction. Amid the chaos, Raishin stands on a rock on the pure lands with a dead look in his eyes. Back at Ibuki's position, June observes that all the civilians are alive but unconscious, and Yakumo confirms that their Terra has been drained. It seems that only the Mototsumitamas and their corresponding contractees are unaffected, which explains why Kuraki fell unconscious earlier. After some time, June and Colonel Bernhard proceed to the sacred precincts to investigate what is going on, as it is responsible for leaving the civilians unconscious. Minutes later, Ibuki and the others proceed to the island to make some observations themselves. On arriving at a certain spot on the island, Kuro detects something strange about the place, but lies about it when Ibuki questions her. Later that night, Ibuki and the others lie to rest after a long journey. Kuro has some difficulty sleeping, and she stands up after detecting strange Terra in the atmosphere. When she gets up, she meets up with Rihanna, who offers her a snack. Meanwhile, Ibuki thinks deeply about Akani, and he wonders where she might be. The following day, Ibuki and the others proceed on their journey to the island. After walking for some minutes, they encounter a Mototsumitama named Namu, who sits on a platform. Kuro, upon seeing Namu, freaks out because she is not from the sacred precincts, and she questions her origins. Namu then confirms that she is a Mototsumitama, and she's there only to record history. Members of her clan are all historians who constantly take records of the history of the world since it began. For some reason, Namu is convinced that history is about to change, and Tot is why she is there to record it. The fact that history is about to change does not sit right with Ibuki, and he questions Namu about what she meant by history changing. Namu then replies stating that all Raiseki across the world were destroyed simultaneously, and this leaves Ibuki and the others speechless. Namu also confirms that all the Terra from the destroyed Raiseki are coming to the island because the Raiseki there is the Reuseki. Furthermore, she explains the nature of the Raiseki, and then moves over to speaking about the Reyuseki, which has the power of the Masagami sealed in it. The Masagami is a deity born from Terra when the world was created. 
According to history, the Masagami humans and Mototsumitamas were born from Terra and they existed in different worlds. Because of Masagami's greed, he took over the harmony of nature away from the Mototsumitamas and cut through the lands of humans. Because humans created altars for various deities, the Masagama became enraged and sought to kill all humans and their Terra for themselves. It was at this time that Mototsumitamas formed contracts with humans and fought with the Masagami. At that time, the battle was intense and after centuries had passed, the Masagami were defeated and their power was sealed in the Raiseki, including the Reuseki as well. However, the Masagami refused to die and they cast a cure on humanity before they were sealed. The curse accounts for the Doppelinger system and when Ibuki confirms this from Namu, he becomes speechless. Moving on, Namu explains that once the number of master roots increases, the amount of Terra in the world will become saturated, and as such the power of the Masagami sealed within the Reuseki will revive. She then adds that anyone who obtains the power of the Masagami can become the destroyer of the world, leaving Ibuki and the others stunned when they hear this. Seconds after Namu is done with her lecture, a Mototsumitama named Aragi from the Ginko clan arrives at the scene with his contractee with the intent to defeat Kuro and obtain the power of the Masagami. He then reveals that he is not the only one after the power, and Kuro looks terrified when she hears this. Elsewhere, Ration is surrounded by Colonel Bernhard and his men. Bernhard and his men intend to fight Ration and prevent him from acquiring the power of the Masagami. Back on the outskirts of the island, Aragi performs a synchro with his contractee and prepares to fight Kuro. Kuro does the same with Ibuki, and she prepares to battle her opponent. Yakumo intends to assist Kuro, but Rihanna does not agree with him because he has not fully recovered. Soon, the battle between Kuro and Aragi begins as Sora. Aragi's contractee uses her thousands to place Ibuki and Kuro in an intensified gravitational field. The effectees of the field makes Ibuki and Kuro feel heavy, restricting their movement almost permanently. But Aragi is not affected by the field, because he has trained aggressively in such conditions in the past. After some time, Kuro manages to get up after feeling intense pressure on her skin. She tries a punch at Aragi, but it does not affect him. Aragi then states that all her attacks will be useless if she does not use acceleration due to gravity G to her advantage. Following that, Aragi pounds Kuro heavily on the ground and Kuro feels two times the effect. With this knowledge, Kuro manages to distract Aragi by protecting some energy blasts at him, while Kuro seizes the opportunity to use her Exceed on Aragi from above. Her Exceed deals an amount of damage to Aragi that causes him to take the battle seriously as he previously underestimated Kuro. Along the line, Ibuki projects some energy blast at Sora that destroys her artificial thousands in the process. The fighting plane between Argai and Kuro is now leveled, and Kuro lands a series of exceeds at Aragi that ends their battle in the process. After taking victory in the battle, Kuro confirms that her brother is on the island, and she reveals that she has been sensing her brother's Terra ever since she got on the island, elsewhere. Colonel Bernhard's men fall to the ground after being defeated by Raishin. June and Bernhard are the only ones left conscious, and they both proceed to battle Raishin. Seconds later, Colonel Bernard performs a synchro with June, and he proceeds to use his Exceed on Raishin. His Exceed allows him to move at super speeds and deliver fatal attacks in the process. Even after Bernhard lands a series of coordinated speed attacks on his opponent, Raishin manages to recover, and get up on his feet. At this point, Raishin ends the battle with Bernhard, and he projects a large energy blast at Bernhard. Elsewhere, Kuro proceeds to resume her journey on the island, and after some time she detects her brother's Terra, but this time it is more concentrated. Yakumo also feels Raishin's Terra, and Ibuki wonders if Raishin is after the Masagami's powers too. A few days ago, Mikami was surrounded by some tribal ends at night. One of the men in suits makes the mistake of touching her, and they all get beaten to the ground in the process. After defeating the tribal ends, Excel proceeds out of the shadows and offers to form a contract with her with the intent of avenging Steiner, her previous contractor. In the present, Mikami and Excel are present on the island and they both proceed on their journey to find Raishin. Later that morning, Kuro and Ibuki proceed on their journey to find Raishin. After some time, Yakumo cannot keep up with Kuro's walking speed because of his health condition. At first, Ibuki proposes that they all wait till Yakumo recovers, but he proceeds into the woods with Kuro after hearing a weird sound. Meanwhile, Tenma, a Mototsumitama, watches Ibuki and Kuro from an enchanted circle. His contactee, Kohaku, who hangs on a tree, is happy that they have prey to fist on. Both parties intend to take the Masagami's power for themselves, and will stop at nothing to get it. When Kuro and Ibuki get Inyo the woods, Kuro detects the presence of an enemy, Mototsumitama. Kuro and Ibuki hear a terrifying voice from a distance that threatens their presence in the woods. After a while, some vines try to restrain Kuro and Ibuki, but they manage to resist. Tenma's exceed allows him to control the plants in the woods, 
and he uses them to attack Kuro and Ibuki. Excel and Mikami observe Kuro and Ibuki from a distance, and she observes that Ibuki's synchro with Kuro has gotten deeper. While in the woods, Kohaku laughs as Kuro gets attacked by vines. Kuro then gets restrained by the vines in such a way, which prevents her from moving easily. After struggling for some time, Ibuki projects energy blasts at the vines freeing Kuro in the process. Furthermore, Tenma is pissed about the fact that Ibuki shot at his vines. For this reason, he uses his vines to restrain Ibuki and Kuro. On the other hand, Ibuki manages to free himself and Kuro from captivity as he projects more energy blasts at the vine. The battle between Kuro, Ibuki and the enemy seem difficult because Ibuki and Kuro do not know where the enemy is. However, Puni Puni, Kuro's dog, manages to find Kohaku and deliver a nasty bite to her arse. The effect of the bite causes Kohaku to scream, and Kuro discovers her position. For some reason, Kohaku is scared when Kuro gets closer to her and she runs to her contractor after some time. Because of a massive vibration that occurs on the island, Kuro gets distracted and Tenma seizes the opportunity to restrain Kuro on huge vines. Yakumo feels the impact of the earthquake and it turns out that Reishin is close to the Reiseki. Along the line, Tenma tries to kill Kuro, who is stuck in the vines. Just as the sharp vines reach Kuro, she assumes another personality. Ibuki frees himself from the vines and feels something weird about Kuro's Terra. For some reason, Reishin detects something odd about Kuro as he feels her Terra. Back in the woods, Ibuki arrives at Kuro's position, only to find her standing alone in a partially excavated circle. Ibuki then asks about Tenma and Kohaku, and Kuro replies stating that they might have run away. Meanwhile, Kohaku, who is covered in blood, stands terrified as Tenma hangs dead on a tree. Later that day, Excel and Mikami meet up with Raishin in the woods. Excel intends to avenge Steiner, and after she makes her intentions clear, Raishin urges her not to waste the life Steiner died for. Even at that, Excel intends to fight, and Mikami agrees to fight till the death. Seconds later, Excel performs a synchro with Mikami and assumes strategic positions to fight Raishin. The first attack that Raishin summons at Excel gets blocked by Excel's hex wall, which looks stronger than ever. As Resihin launches multiple energy blasts at Mikami, Excel produces hex walls to protect her, giving them a good fighting advantage against Raishin. Along the line, Mikami engages in hand to hand combat with Raishan, where she uses her speed to dodge all imminent punches coming at her. Minutes later, Raishin summons a series of energy blasts at Excel but she uses her hex wall to block them. Her hex wall has a new feature in that it absorbs the energy blast that makes contact with it. Excel then releases this collective energy at Raishin that deals a good amount of damage to Raishin. Mikami seizes the opportunity to attack Raishin as he is now weak from taking so much damage. When she tries to land an attack to finish off her opponent, Raishin smiles for some reason and looks confident. Ibuki and Kuro arrive at the scene after hearing a nasty explosion. They both see Mikami lying weak on Excel's arms after taking damage from Raishin who seems to be missing at the time. Excel then warns Ibukiya and Kuro to be careful, because Raishin is now more powerful than ever. She adds that he has a contract D, and this leaves Ibuki and Kuro shocked. At sunset, Ibuki and Kuro arrive at a spot where they see Akani. Ibuki is glad that he gets to see her because he has missed her. Unfortunately, a contract crest glows on Akani's hand, and Ibuki finds out that Akane is Raishin's contract D. Ibuki cannot believe his eyes as he sees Raishin with Akani, and he appears speechless. Seconds later, Raishin takes Akane away to a point, and Ibuki chases after him with Kuro. Ibuki then questions Akane's reason for taking Resihin's side, but she gives no response. Kuro, who is enraged at this point, performs a synchro with Ibuki and heads to take down her brother. Raishin looks confident for some reason, and assures Akane that he will end the battle with Kuo quickly. Soon, the battle between Kuro and Raishin begins as Kuro tries to use her exceed on Raishin. She misses her target at first, and when she tires the attack one more time, Raishin moves fast and dodges Kuro's attack. He then takes advantage of an opening and punches his sister hard on her lower abdomen. One would think that it is over for Kuro, but she gets up on her feet after taking so much damage. As powerful as Raishin is, he looks shocked when he sees that Kuro recovers quickly. Kuro is now confident that she can defeat a brother, and she proceeds to fight him after charging up her Terra. The fight power punch that Kuro lands on Raishin gets blocked, and she moves swiftly to prepare another attack. This time, she gets more Terra from Ibuki via their Terra cycle, and continues her battle with Raishin. Moving on, Kuro uses her Exceed on Raishin from a close distance, and it sets Raishin backward a few meters. The effect of Kuro's Exceed makes Resihin fall to the ground for the first time, seconds later. Kuro moves swiftly to end things with her brother, but Raishin recovers and lands summons an attack on Kuro. Ibuki sees through this and creates a diversion for Raishin giving Kuro an opening to land a nasty attack on Raishin using double the power of her exceed. 
The effect of Kuro's punch makes Raishin fall flat on the ground and Kuro moves closer to confirm if he is down. To her surprise, Raishin manages to get up. Even at that, she proceeds to use her exceed in her opponent again, but Raishin blocks the attack as he receives more Terra from Akani. At this point, Kuro steps back while Ibuki wonders why Akani is helping Resihin. Soon, the battle between Kuro and Raishin continues, as they both get aerial and land a punch on themselves that almost cancels out. Both Ibuki and Akani try their best to send enough Terra to their contractors, but Akani manages to exceed Ibuko making Raishin overpower Kuro as a result. Elsewhere, Yakumo feels the impact of the battle and realizes that Kuro is fighting her brother. He feels bad that he is not able to assist the princess in such a crucial time, but Rihanna consoles him. Back at Ibuki's position, Kuro takes a lot of damage from Rishin, but still gets up to fight. The fact that her contract with Ibuki is deeper gives her an advantage in battle. She proceeds with her battle against Raishin, where she moves fast to dodge Raishin's energy blasts. Along the line, an energy blast aims at Kuro in mid-air, but Ibuki projects an energy blast that nullifies the attack saving Kuro in the process. Next, Akane warns Ibuki and Kuro to leave the sacred grounds adding that what lies ahead is no place for them. Ibuki questions Akane if she is being manipulated by Reishin, but she answers stating that it is her will. Kuro detects her Terra transmission from Akane to Reishin, and it turns out that Akane is the one and only master root. After that, Ibuki assumes that Reishin was using Yuki in the past so he could get to Akane. The thought of saving Akane from Reishin makes Ibuki supply more Terra to Kuro. Kuro then proceeds to fight Raishin knowing that Raishin is now much stronger than her. This time that Kuro fights with her brother, she moves at high speeds which gives Raishin a hard time when he tries to land an attack on her. Ibuki concentrates his Terra to Kuro, increasing her power level in the process. Kuro goes berserk on her brother, and lands an aerial exceed on him. However, Raishin manages to survive the attack, and he notices something different about Kuro's Terra. After some seconds of intensive thinking, Raishin realizes the reason behind Kuro's might, and vows to end their battle in a single strike. Because of how juiced Kuro is, she proceeds to land the finishing strike on Raishin after absorbing a huge amount of Terra from Ibuki. At long last, Raishin uses a technique that reveals Kuro's other form, and he overpowers her in the process. The effects of Raishin's power send Kuro flying to a wall. As she gets stuck in the wall, Raishin launches his Exceed on Kuro which impales her with lots of Terra Spears. After the effect of the Exceeds wears off, Kuro falls unconscious to the ground and Ibuki gets affected too. Akane tries to go after Ibuki, but Raishin prevents her from doing so, stating that those cycles, Terra cannot dissolve their contract. Just before Ibuki passes out, he falls to the ground, looks at Akane, then mutters why with his mouth. After the battle between Kuro and Rishin is over, Kuro and Ibuki lie unconscious on the ground, and Tenma watches them from above. Yakumo leaves Rihanna to find Kuro to find out what state she is in. Elsewhere, Excel and Mikami manage to recover from their previous battle, and they both see Rishin and Akani walking together on the island. As Rishin and Akani make their way to Reyoseki, he sees Tenma on the way who questions him about his true intentions. For an undisclosed reason, Tenma does not believe that Raishin wants to gain the power of the Masagami. Raishin is curious at this point and he questions who Tenma is, and then finds out that Tenma is a historian. Soon their conversation ends as Raishin tells her to perform her duties. On seeing the Reuseki, Raishin gets flashbacks and remembers the last time he saw his mother alive. In the present, Raishin performs a synchro with Akani, and begins to destroy the Reuseki while Tenma watches all that goes down from a distance. Seconds later, the Reuseki is destroyed, and the Terra Surge causes a massive earthquake to shake the island. Unfortunately, an evil entity comes out of the Reuseki and spreads hatred and darkness in the atmosphere. A dark portal is formed where vile flying creatures come out in numbers heading to attack Raishin and Akani. Although Tenma is not supposed to interfere with history, she takes up her sword and begins to slaughter the creatures while Raishin aims multiple energy blasts at the creatures to prevent them from harming Akani. Some of the flying creatures manage to escape the cave where Raishin is as they fly out into the atmosphere. Elsewhere, Yakumo and Rihanna meet up with Excel, who is surprised at the turnout of events. Excel then points in the direction of Ibuki, and Yakumo finds out that he is alive but unconscious. Soon, one of the vile creatures flies to Rihanna's position, but Yakumo dives in time to destroy it. Yakumo then performs a synchro with Rihanna to fight the creatures and protect Rihanna. However, Namu arrives at the scene and then slaughters some of the creatures. After that, she tells Yakumo to protect Kuro because the creatures are coming for her. Minutes later, Namu manages to revive Ibuki with her healing powers, but she fails when she tries to do the same with Kuro. After Ibuki regains consciousness, Namu explains all that happened while he was out cold. Back at Raishin's position, he defeats a bunch of flying creatures with help from Akani. Raishin intends for the Masagami to come out of the portal so he can defeat them. Some years ago when Raishin's mother was still alive, she performed a ritual Tata allowed her to see a dream. 
After the ritual, she reveals to the elders that the dream was nothing ominous. Later that day, she tells her son, Raishin, that Kuro will be killed because she bears a strange emblem on her fist. It turns out that she saw a dream where only one person were able to defeat the Masagami. Raishin's mother then hands Raishin a gem that was used to fight the Masagami for centuries, stating that if Akani becomes a master root, she will possess the ultimate Terra. Furthermore, she states that the elders wish to avoid the battle with the Masagami, and that is why they want to kill Kuro. After Raishin gets all this info from his mother, he looks shocked, and he proceeds on a mission to prevent his sister from imminent death. At sunset, Raishin upsets the gathering of some Mototsumitamas in his clan, and he kills all of them that wanted to kill his sister, including the elder who was behind it all. Later that day, Raishin's mother hangs tied to the Reyoseki, and it is her wish to be killed so that Raishin can fight and defeat the Masagami. After Raishin killed his mother, he departed the sacred precincts and embarked on his plan to form a contract with Akani as instructed by his mother. At the time when Akani crashed into the sea, she was rescued by Raishin, who placed the thousands on her wrist and formed a contract with her. In the present, Raishin aims energy blasts at the flying creatures while Namu explains an anomaly in Kuro's Terra. She speaks of a rumor that Kuro would be the one to lead the world to its destruction, even as she is unsure of it at the time. Amid the chaos, the synchro between Rihanna and Yakumo deepens, giving Yakumo a fighting edge over the creatures. With this, he uses his exceed and defeats a bunch of flying creatures that try to attack Rihanna. Afterward, Ibuki and everyone present on the island hears a terrifying sound after Raishin defeats the final flying creature that causes the others to disappear. For some strange reason, Kuro looks in pain while still unconscious, and when she opens her eyes, a dense wave of terror proceeds out of the ground and manifests itself as the Masagami. The Masagami present themselves as two female beings meters away from Raishin, and Kuro realizes that she is part of them, even though she hasn't changed form yet. She then realizes that her brother did everything that he did to save her, including the part where he killed their mother. After both beings appear in front of Raishin and Akani, Raishin looks pumped to fight as he screams their name. He then summons energy projections at both of them, but it deals no damage on them. A rather epic battle begins between Raishin and the Masagami as they summon Larva from the ground, causing the island to vibrate. The impact of the vibration causes Raishin to activate a barrier shield to prevent Akani from dying. The battle goes on to a point where the Masagami launch an icy attack that infects the entire island, converting the weather to a similar winter period. The icy projections are so overpowered that they break through Excel's hex wall that she places to protect herself. After the fog spears out, the Masagami discover that Raishin and Akani are still alive. Seconds later, Kuro and Ibuki arrive at the scene where Ibuki confirms that Kuro is part of the Masagami due to the striking resemblance that resonates between them. Raishin then warns them not to come closer, and he fires an energy blast at them to show how serious he is. After that, he performs a synchro with Akani, and activates his exceed once more to use against the beings. This time, the Terra he expends is far greater when compared to the last time he used his exceed. Even at that, the exceed is not powerful enough to defeat the Masagami, and they take little damage after experiencing the effects of Raishin's exceed. On the other hand, the beings retaliate by sending a collection of dangerous projections at Raishin at Akani that affect the entire island. Akani, who spectates the battle, warns Ibuki and Kuro to leave, and she continues to supply Raishin with Terra. Minus later, the battle between Raishin and the Masagami gets aerial, and Raishin manages to land nasty attacks on his enemies. As powerful as the beings are, Raishin uses his speed and brute force to exchange nasty blows with the beings. Furthermore, Raishin's Terra gets amplified when Akani uses the power of thousands to supply Raishin with more Terra. After getting more juiced up, Raishin tries his Exceed on the Masagami who are stuck to a wall at this point. The effects of Raishin's Exceed shake the entire island and destroy the bodies of the Masagami in the process. However, Raishin's powers were not enough to defeat the Masagami because they began to regenerate after taking such a deadly attack. The fact that the Masagami are still alive shocks Ibuki and the others, leaving them somewhat terrified. While the Masagami tries to regenerate, Raishin gets more juice from Akani and prepares to launch another exceed at the beings. In split seconds, lightning strikes Raishin from the sky, and it turns out that Kuro is responsible for the strike, as the Masagami in her begins to awaken. Ibuki is left shocked as Kuro begins to fight Raishin using the Masagami's powers. She is not herself as she is seen speaking supremely like the beings. Next, the battle between Raishin and Kuro continues as both parties launch brutal attacks against themselves. At this time, Kuro does not hold back as she uses her speed to fight Raishin and dodge all attacks coming at her. When Raishin manages to take advantage of an opening, 
he gets shot by one of the Masagami. The Masagami's regenerative abilities shock Namu, who spectates the battle as it took a short time for the beings to regenerate. Reishin, who is outnumbered at this point, takes lots of damage from the Masagami, leaving Akani to feel the impact of the Terra loss. Kuro and the other beings manage to knock Reishin to the ground, and they all assemble at a spigot to merge into one. With the fate of the world at stake, Ibuki is concerned about Kuro because if she fully merges with the beings, she will be gone forever. He thinks about what he can do to turn their situation around. Meanwhile, Yakumo and Mikami arrive at a spot to engage in combat with the Masagami before they achieve unity. Along the line, Kuro summons an attack on Yakumo, Mikami, and Excel that sets them falling to the ground. Amid the chaos, Ibuki yells Kuro's name and manages to call her attention. Ibuki then falls unconscious to the ground and reminisces on the time he spent with Kuro, beginning from when they met to the present. While doing that, he reaches a point where he gets to speak directly to Kuro's mind on an ancestral level. During the conversation between Ibuki and Kuro, Ibuki begs Kuro to remain the way she was when he found her the first time. Kuro then agrees to Ibuki's terms, allowing their contract crest to reactivate. In the present, Ibuki regains consciousness and performs a synchro with Kuro, supplying her with a huge amount of Rara in the process. With this power, she proceeds to engage in a furious battle with the Masagami by launching a series of exceeds at them. Because of how juiced up Kuro is, she does lots of damage to the Masagami while using her exceed. Along the line, Ibuki's life gets threatened, but Reishin arrives just in time to prevent him from dying. After taking some time to recover, he uses his might to throw the beings to a rock and they remain stuck due to the force of impact. In seconds, Reishin absorbs lots of Terra from Akani and becomes overpowered. Kuro then restrains the beings on the rock and passes huge volts of electricity through them, giving Reishin an opening to perform his finishing move. Just before Raishin proceeds to land the finishing attack, he appreciates Ibuki for everything he has done for his sister. Following that, he expels all his Terra while performing a powerful Exceed on the Masagami that makes him fall dead to the ground. The effect of the Exceed kills the Masagami, preventing them from regenerating anymore. Kuro weeps bitterly because her brother Raishin sacrificed himself to save her. After Raishin's death, the dark clouds in the sky clear out allowing all the sun's rays to reach the earth. While Kuro mourns her brother's death on the island, the Masagami appear on the island again but this time they are formless. The fact that the Masagami appeared on the island one more time leaves Ibuki and Kuro terrified. Both beings then merge into one so that they can survive in that plane of existence. After both Masagamis become one, Kuro proceeds to fight them but the effect of their clash splits the island into three. Namu dives to Akani's position to prevent her from falling to her death while Yakumo and some others hang on a three. The battle between Kuro and the Masagami continues as Kuro manages to keep up with her opponent. It gets to a point where the Masagami projects an energy blast at Kuro, but Ibuki projects his Terra to nullify the attack. After that, Kuro gets up and continues to fight, while Ibuki continues to intensify his synchro, with Kuro giving her more power boost in the process. The fact that Kuro receives much Terra from Ibuki makes her optimistic, as she believes that she can end the battle. The battle then gets aerial and both parties launch a fatal energy punch at themselves that meets at a neutral ground. Since the combined powers of the Masagami have been amplified, they easily overpower Kuro and then try to reabsorb her to themselves to form a unity. The reabsorption process zaps a lot of Terra from Kuro, which affects Ibuki in the process. Namu then moves swiftly and mages to sever the link between Kuro and the Masagami disrupting their merging process, but she gets hit by an energy blast projected by the Masagami. Along the line, Akani uses her thousands and fuses with Ibuki, allowing her to transfer lots of Terra to Ibuki. As a result, much Terra flows through Kuro's body, and she gets pumped with lots of energy. Furthermore, the new power that Kuro possesses gives her the upper hand in battle as she uses her incredible speed to fight against the Masagami. It gets to a point where Ibuki signifies that Kuro should use her Exceed, and as Kuro moves swiftly to land the finishing attack, she uses her Exceed on the Masagami, which is a thousand times more intense. The effect of Kuro's Exceed on the Masagami disintegrates them instantly impact. After Kuro takes victory in the battle, she sends all accumulated Terra back to the world so that they can regain consciousness. With this sacred precincts fade into the horizon, and Ibuki assumes that the chaos is finally over. Days after the incident in the sacred precincts, human beings and other Mototsumitamas regain consciousness and have no knowledge of what went down while they passed out. One day, Ibuki wakes up from bed and finds Kuro eating cabbage from the kitchen as she claims she is hungry. Later that morning, Makana, Ibuki, Kuro, and some others enjoy a delicious breakfast made by Akani. For some reason, 
Namu declines to leave the country, claiming that he has some things she still has to record. Later that day, Rihanna gives Yakumo his launch, while Aknai drives Ibuki's granddad and some others to the airport. Unfortunately, Namu playfully steals Yakumo's meal and heads out the window. After Ibuki's granddad takes off, Ibuki, Akani, and Kuro stand close to the runway and stir into space. While at it, Kuro asks if she can stay on Earth, and Ibuki agrees to save her the stress of staying in the sacred precincts all by herself. Kuro seems happy at this point, and hopes to spend more time with Ibuki and Akane. Also, Akane receives a text from Excel indicating that she is traveling back to Germany. At sunset, Mikami drives Excel in a car, and they seem to be heading out of the city. Hours later, a girl tries to cross the road after speaking to her schoolmate about seeing a girl who looks just like her. Ibuki witnesses this, and watches the girl try to cross the road. While crossing the road, a car speeds towards her and Ibuki arrives just in time to save the girl from dying. This proves that the doppelganger system still exists, and Kuro confirms that it exists because she is still alive. Soon, a conversation between Namu, Ibuki, Yakumo, and Kuro begins on how they can stop the doppelganger system. It turns out that the system can only be stopped if Kuro dies, but she cannot, as her life is tied to Ibuki. Later that evening, Kuro craves the food Ibuki first offered to her and takes Ibuki out so they can get it. On getting to the food spot, Ibuki and Kuro find out that the vendor is not there, but she arrives after some minutes in a van. While enjoying their meal, Kuro appreciates the fact that she met Ibuki, and she states that she is filled with gratitude towards him. The following day, Kuro goes out for a walk with her dog after eating breakfast made by Akani. When she tries to leave the door, Ibuki leaves the dining table to see her one last time, and he goes back to eat, when Akane calls his attention. Later that day, Namu tells Ibuki that she is leaving because there is nothing more for her to record. Meanwhile, Kuor stops on the road and weeps bitterly after having the thought of not seeing Ibuki again. Later that evening, Yakumo leaves his contractee to join Kuro in the sacred precincts. The Masagami's curse faded away after being shouldered by Kuro for a while. People who saw their doppelganers never faced death because the curse had faded away. To prevent the cure from affecting the human world again, Kuro sealed herself in the sacred precincts far from the reach of mere humans. Years after the Masagami's defeat, Akane prepares to marry Ibuki. Years back when it all began, Kuro walked along the streets of Tokyo City looking for her brother. On her first experience in Tokyo City, she notices something different about the world he brother made. One day, Akane gets on a call with Ibuki and finds out that he is still sleeping. When she gets to her job, she picks up a picture that reminds her about Ibuki's mother's passing. Back at the sacred precincts when Kuro's mother was still alive, Reishin trains with Yakumo and easily kicks his ass during their sparing session. After the training session, Kuro begs her brother to train her, but he declines as time does not permit him to do so. Kuro's mother then advises Kuro not to depend on her brother, rather she should choose a righteous of her own. One evening, Akane gets dinner with her classmates and it turns out that one of their friends recently got married. One of Akane's friends at the dinner table teases her to adopt a more feminine approach towards Ibuki so that something can work out between them. Because of the advice Akane receives from her friend, she recalls the time she has spent with Ibuki, beginning when they got closer to high school. She thinks deeply about this until she gets home later that evening. One day, Kuro stands on a platform and sees Ibuki who treated her to a nice meal the previous day. Minutes later, Mayu crosses the road and dies after a car knocks her away. In the scene, Kuro reveals that Mayu is not a root, and she runs away after some tribal ends spot her. The following day, Punipuni, Kuro's dog, catches Ibuki's scent and leads her to Ibuki's house. Akane gets to Ibuki's house that evening and finds Kuro lying unconscious on the ground because her dog barks at the door. Furthermore, Akane offers Kuro and her dog something to drink, and she heads out to get dinner for her. When Ibuki gets home, he finds Kuro eating cabbage from the fridge and he freaks out when he sees her. Later that evening, she sits by herself at a park after Ibuki sent her out of his house. After some minutes pass, Ibuki arrives with a meal and offers it to Kuro. After spending some time with Ibuki, she decides to leave so she does not bother Ibuki anymore. Just as Kuro tries to leave the premises, she gets surrounded by Seiji's men who are tribakal ends. In the end, Ibuki was killed, and Kuro watched how he fell to the ground. After Kuro escapes the premises with Ibuki's body, she makes a contract with him by exchanging hearts to save his life. Years later, Akane stands alone in the Kayonji headquarters and thinks deeply about Ibuki. She misses him a lot, and she recalls the first time they both kissed. Later that day, Kuro walks along the cold streets of Tokyo City and thinks deeply about her contractee who is unconscious a the time. At the time when Kuro fights with Mikami, Ibuki watches from a distance as Mikami holds her dead contractee, Shingo, in her arms. The night before Ibuki and the others travel to Okinawa, Kuro has difficulty sleeping, and Akane speaks to her about the situation. It turns out that Kuro is worried because Ibuki is a sub, 
and she feels that Ibuki will die if she keeps using his Terra. Akane tries to talk her out of sadness as Kuro thinks that Ibuki hates her to some degree. At the time when Ibuki wakes up, he freaks out when he finds out that he was in a coma for about six months. When Akane sets eyes on Ibuki, she proceeds to hug him after missing him for such a long time. However, Akane crashes into the sea after her incident with the chopper that tries to save her from Reiga's wrath. Minutes after the chopper crashes into the sea, Raishin enters into the water and tries to save Akane. While at it, he gives her the gem his mum gave him, and he proceeds to form a contract with her. Akane agrees to join Reishi because if they can defeat the Masagami, Ibuki will finally be free from his fate of imminent death. She intends to prevent sad events from happening in Ibuki's life. Moving up, Kuro defeats the Masagami after absorbing the combined Terra of Ibuki and Akane via the thousands. Days after the Masagami's defeat, Ibuki lets Kuro stay in Tokyo so she does not go off and live alone in the sacred precincts. Later that evening, Ibuki, Kuro, and the others find out that Masagami's curse still exists as Ibuki prevents a student from dying. Because the curse still exists, Kuro leaves the city to dwell in the sacred precincts to prevent innocents from dying. Days after the Masagami's defeat, Kuraki walks along the streets of Tokyo City like a normal civilian. He observes a board that displays that the Kayonji group has some billions in debt. In the present, Akane walks down the aisle in a church as guests applaud her much-awaited union with Ibuki. About a decade ago, Excel's brother Klaus lies dead in her arms. Steiner proceeds out of the shadows and offers her two choices. One involves Excel losing her memories and the other involves forming a contract with him to walk the path of vengeance. Months after Steiner's death, Excel vows to avenge Steiner and she meets Mikami one evening. During the meeting with Mikami, Excel offers to form a contract with Mikami, and includes a reward that makes Mikami interested. Mikami does not mind walking the part of revenge with Excel, even if it means facing Reishin herself. One evening, after Ibuki wakes up from a coma, he enjoys dinner with his granddad, Kuro, Yakumo, and some others. While at it, Kuro is happy that Ibuki is conscious and she emphasizes that he eats to recover quickly. Later that evening, Mikami speeds off with Excel in her car and they both exchange basic personal information about themselves. Their conversation goes on till a point where Excel reveals that Ration is still alive as much as others think he is dead. She is sure of her words because she can sense Ration's Terra on their plane of existence. Because of Excel's looks, Mikami assumes that she is young, but Excel is a lot older than she thinks. After Excel makes it to Mikami's house, she makes a bank transfer to Mikami's account as payment for Mikami's reward. At the time when Claus was still alive in the past, Excel was the one responsible for her family as her both parents were dead. Claus likes to spend time with her sister, and Excel has a good connection with him. One evening, their settlement gets engulfed in flames, and Excel finds out that her brother is dead. It is at this point that Steiner proceeds out of the shadows and makes her pick between two choices. After the incident at Excel's settlement, Steiner explains the idea of Mototsumi Thomas to Excel so she can understand the world she will be involved in. He then reveals that some evil Mototsumitamas are the ones responsible for attacking Excel's settlement. Excel, who still grieves her brother, accepts to be of help to Steiner by agreeing to form a contract with him. Back at Mikami's residence, Mikami confirms her payment, and then Excel finishes her tea and proceeds to take a shower after Mikami makes fun of her scent. Elsewhere, an evil Mototsumitama heads on the road to Mikami's residence. For some reason, Mikami's life might be in danger, because the van contains tribal ends. Several years ago, Excel joined the noble one, and was welcomed by General Gustav at the time. Days after she joined the force, she began her training where she was pushed to her limits. After some months of training, she began completing missions with Steiner, and on most occasions they both came out successful. While on a plane to a specific location, Steiner sits beside Excel on the plane and gives her a piece of jewelry to represent their bond, since they have been close so far. Back in the shower, Excel stares at the jewelry and passes out. Minutes later, Mikami arrives at the bathroom and finds Excel lying unconscious. She then tucks her into a bed to sleep and leaves the bedroom. As Mikami steps outside her house, she thinks deeply about her late contractee Shingo and realizes that their bond is fading as time goes by. Soon, the enemy Mototsumi Tama and his tribal ends arrive at Mikami's house while Mikami proceeds into the house to get Excel. When Mikami arrives at Excel's bedroom, she finds out that she is conscious already and informs her about the danger ahead. Meanwhile, the house is partially on fire at this point and Mikami proceeds out of the window with Excel to avoid imminent death. After making contact with the ground, the tribal ends dressed in suits begin to attack Mikami, 
and she manages to fight them off. Along the line, she gets restrained by the Tribal Ends who easily overpower her after some seconds of fighting. The leader of the Tribal Ends then comes out and summons an artificial thousands at Mikami, that spit flames aiming for Mikami's position. Before the fire gets to Mikami, Excel uses her hex wall to protect her. Along the line, Mikami takes advantage of a fighting opportunity and performs a synchro with Excel. The Moto Tsumitama, upon witnessing this, looks shocked because he never expected Mikami to have a Contract D. He quickly pays a price as Mikami uses her Exceed on him, which disfigures his face. Later on, the rest of the tribal ends lie on the ground with some dead or unconscious. However, Excel is not happy that Mikami formed a contract with her without her knowledge. She wanted to let go of Steiner before she fused with someone else while Mikami did it, because old age was catching up to Excel. At this point, Mikami has to walk away from Shingo's memories as her house gets covered in flames with Shingo's picture in it. The following day, Mikami and Excel proceed on a journey to fulfill their next objective as Mikami drives the car out of the city. The end.